because I've been questioning my sanity recently. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's called They Live. Yeah, it's Roddy Piper. Isn't what, it? what else has made you question your sanity? Oh, every day, man. Every day <laughs> life. <laughs> Waking up on a morning. Oh, God. I take it we're already rolling, are we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think so. Brilliant. Great. <laughs> well, thanks for coming down, guys. Pleasure. As we were just yeah. saying, third time for you. I know, eh? And, like, it, it feels like I haven't been away. Like, every time I come it? here. It was like, well, it was February because that was like a bit of a year. So, the next February Fem- will be two years. Wow, man. Wow. <laughs> Ryan, time flies. Ryan, your first time? Yeah, I'm very excited. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate so, I wanted it, to get you on the primarily to talk about Target Wrestling. Yeah. Which is like. It's like old school independent wrestling promotion style. It's yeah, oh, it's 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 something. Yeah, I mean, so Target Wrestling's been going for five and a half years. In April, it's going to be our sixth year. Did you were you involved at the beginning of it? Yeah, yeah, from the very start. Well, it all started like I didn't like own the company or have anything to do with the company at the start. Mm-hmm. So essentially, what happened was um, I wanted to get into wrestling because loved wrestling and knew a bit about British wrestling and the scene and things like that. So I really wanted to get involved. And to be honest, I was quite happy with either like setting up the chairs or, uh, <laughs> or taking know, a chair. Taking a chair, <laughs> yeah, whatever, yeah. And uh, so I messaged the company that was working in Carlisle at the time, which was Triple Team Promotions, which was run by uh, John and Dave Natras. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, basically just said, would you like me to, can I come, can I, can I come and help? Because I really love wrestling and... I feel like, you know, I just can do anything, you know, whatever I can do to be a part of it. And then um, basically it was Dave who got back in touch with me and said, well, TCP is kind of dwindling down, um, but we're all starting up this new venture called Target Wrestling. Uh, do you want to be a part of that? And I said, I can help with like the social media or put posters out or I say just ring the bell. That would have yeah. been like, <laughs> yeah, that was like... got to start somewhere. Yeah, well, I was, sure. I was happy doing absolutely anything, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. And... Um, I missed the first show because the first show was in Stranra. Mm-hmm. So, I'm so weird. Like, Stranra. It is Scotland. It's out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's in like, Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's mm-hmm. right at the top. It's like, it's like, it's like a black and white film. Stranra. Fuck, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like an absolute... It's like... Well, it's, it's, it's a uh, different time. They're still using it's, Blockbuster. Yeah. It's that old, right? <laughs> It really is a totally different place. It's like the only place, place Blockbuster's still going. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it's like, uh, like say, you change colour, you go grey when you walk through. It's it's so mad. But yeah, anyway, so the first show was in um, was in Stranra, and I didn't really mm-hmm. know the guys too well at the time. I didn't know them well enough to drive to bloody Stranra to do a wrestling <laughs> show anyway. So I was like, I, I missed that one. And then the week after was the first Carlisle show, which was at the Crown of Mighty Hotel. And uh, I went down uh, to help set the ring up, although I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So yeah. it wasn't really much help. So you're just like winging it. Pretty much, yeah, I didn't, like, I didn't know anything about setting the ring okay. up. This rope's okay. Who cares if someone has to jump off it? You tied, yeah. Have you tightened all them bolts? <laughs> uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. like setting a ring up is hard. You know, it's like an absolute mm-hmm. nightmare, the, the, yeah. the amount of pieces that go into it. But Oh, I can imagine. So I, get to the end of the day. Nobody died, so yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I said, you know, I'd be quite happy if I could just like, I say, ring the bell mm-hmm. or uh, sell merch or set the chairs out. Yeah. Whatever they need me to do, I'm uh-huh. there. And it was John uh, <clears throat> said to me, he was like, all right, well, while you're here, do you want to ref a match tonight? I was like, ref a match? Ref no a way. match? A live wrestling match yeah. on a show? Uh-huh. Yes. Like, of course. So... Um, Talk about being thrown in the deep end, right? That was really being thrown in like the deep end, like... yeah. I don't think we could get away with that uh-huh. now, to be honest. But I think because yeah. it was the first the first show. And yeah. I did know quite a lot about wrestling, so I mm-hmm. must have made quite a nice impression. Um, but So I ran home and got like shirt and pants and, yeah. and everything. Uh-huh. And then I get back to the venue and John comes up to me and goes, ah, so there's been a bit of a problem. Oh, man. The So there was five matches on a show. And yeah. I was going to ref John's match. So like to keep it relatively simple he could keep me right Uh, if there was any issues and he goes yeah there's been a bit of a problem uh the guy who was meant to ref the other matches isn't coming now so you're refing the whole show oh man (laughs) that was like (laughs) wow so Mm -hmm. and this show was like there was i mean to be fair it was the first proper one in carlisle it was only like 35 mm-hmm. people there so it wasn't Where was too this? bad did you say this was the crown, crown of Mighty, yeah so yeah it was a really mm-hmm. nice really nice room yeah but like it had like moss johnny moss was on who was, oh, like, was johnny moss there yeah so he's like oh. in wwe now <laughs> yeah, he, had uh, the, he had like, the big time he yeah, got away he he yeah, yeah. Like, got away. um bt gun was on and um mm-hmm. viper was on loads of like 
big names that yeah to be fair back then british wrestling wasn't as big as it is now no and uh like i'm t- oh, shitting myself like i got in the you ring i got in the ring i was like mm-hmm. uh, all day i was like running like watching clips of refs and kind of getting my head yeah. around I like, I, <laughs> like i know watching I know. refs take chair shots yeah. i'm sure i can win yeah. <laughs> i was like i know wrestling because mm-hmm. i was like 21 at the time yeah, so 21 at the time, I was like, yeah. I know wrestling. Like, mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing. And then, like, get in the ring. And then I'm like, the wrestlers make their entrance. I'm like, I forgot every single rule. Like, what is wrestling? Yeah, you don't really care. <laughs> what is, like, how do they even you win? Stage fright. How do they win a match? Fright. Like, what, what is going on here? So, like, totally, like. I can almost imagine, right? Because, like you say, you've grown up watching wrestling. Yeah. And I have, and you watch wrestling mm. as well. I can imagine in your mind, you know what to do but once you're in the ring trying yes. to work out where you're meant to position yourself yeah, and whatever, yeah, yeah. Like you could you could so easily get it wrong miss a count well i did miss something on that or... first show i did like mess up a finish and oh. luckily oh really yeah wow. i totally messed up finish so yeah. like did but, anyone notice yeah like well yeah because the match was you're, you're yeah. supposed to, you need to know what's supposed to happen in the match don't you pretty much uh-huh. yeah so you need to know what's going to happen and how how they're going to win essentially so that you can yeah. get the right pinfall at the right time yeah and uh yeah, it was a nightmare. Like, not to give too mm-hmm. much away, uh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> like, we uh, obviously got the finish in my uh-huh. head, and I was like, oh, I think I know what that is. Like, I sort of described it to me. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm 95% sure I know yeah. what that is. Mm-hmm. And then they did something, and I was like, yeah, that was it. <coughs> One, yeah. two. And then they weren't kicking out. So I was like, three. Oh, and then they both just looked at me like, are you fucking real? Like, they actually went like five minutes. Because that's the thing as well. Like, I mean... With wrestling, there's a fine line between what's real and what's fake, and yeah. it could get seriously ugly. You could, you could, you could really stand on someone's toes, couldn't yeah, you? They, yeah, yeah. They want to get the perfect finish and stuff. That's so. it. So, like, mm. that was a mis- That was the first time I did anything like that. So, what was supposed to like happen? Shit. What did you do? What did you do wrong? Yeah. It, luckily, the right person won. Like, so that was fine. Just early. Just too early. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, they had like yeah. another ten minutes, probably worth a match to go. In. Uh-huh. <laughs> Unfortunately, not tonight. <laughs> Who was um, in the early days of Target, right? Who was Will? Oh yeah, so right, so Will was the guy who was essentially like behind Target, like so right, Will. Okay. Um, I mean, like a founding member. He like yeah, he yeah. owned the company. So mm. Will had a lot of experience in like TV production, and he, he did a lot of yeah. he promoted a lot of events, yeah. uh, kind of in Dumfries and uh, mm-hmm. Southwest Scotland. Yeah, and um, he and John ended up being business partners, I think. Ah, and right. Then ended up mm-hmm. or, uh, starting Target. Um, but yeah, if there was if it wasn't for Will, there would be no there would be, be no, no target, target wrestling. No, there was and an he, intro- he sorry. like sorry mm. like he like I don't think Will gets enough credit really for what he did. Like he mm-hmm. those first two and a half years establishing the company and uh-huh. financially backing it through like really difficult yeah. times. Difficult thing to get off the ground. One of those totally, things, yeah. yeah. So if it wasn't just to him, get people, I, um, just to get people off the streets to pay to come and watch wrestling, I think exactly. it's tough. That Independent was wrestling, anyway. Totally. It was yeah. really difficult back then mm-hmm. because, I say, the first Carlisle show only drew mm-hmm. 35 people. Then we ran a one about, like, I don't know, it was like three months later in Haraby. I think I you rem- might have been there. I actually. remember that word. I've got an interesting story about that. Oh no, that wasn't that show. This is, this is why. Not, this, this is why I brought him. Yeah, <laughs> this, I've got two interesting. I've got loads, but there's two in particular. I don't know which story he's going to talk uh, about. Yeah. So we'll get. I'll let you talk about it in two should seconds. It, so should, we did like yeah. that show, yeah. which drew like 35 <laughs> people again. Yeah. And then I think in uh, I think it was like then in we didn't yeah. run a Carlisle show for like a little while. Yeah. And then we ran a Carlisle show at the Harrowby Community Centre, and yeah. uh, it was nine months into the company. It wasn't like mm. long. It wasn't even a year old at mm-hmm. the time and it was like it was packed because it was like 125 people in Harrowby Community Centre oh wow I don't even know how many people are allowed in Harrowby Community Centre <laughs> yeah. probably not that many probably people probably not 75 <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, it was it's people like... sitting on radiators and everything it was like mm-hmm. so full oh, alright it's, um, it's fucking cool Matt was, was like... there mm-hmm. it was like kind of early PWG days like you know like sure like the bingo hall kind of yeah stuff, it was right? such a weird looking hall <laughs> <laughs> so weird but anyway Matt was there at that show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was a match on uh, T He brought his tights. T versus, <laughs> well, almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, t- you tell the story because so, you were. <laughs> I, come, I come to this show, right? Because it's the wrestling. I love wrestling. Yeah. And I, I arrive like kind of late. So I'm not on the front row, but I'm sat on the, like, the alley 
of where the wrestlers come out to the ring, mm. you know, and it's about halfway through and um, this match comes up and this guy's coming out. He's called like uh, Tyson T-Bone or something like that. And he's this big jacked motherfucker, you know what I mean? He's like fucking ripped. He's fucking mm. huge, you know what I mean? So he's um, he's playing the part as a heel, you know, he portrays himself as a bad guy. He's really into it. He's like white hot, you know what I mean? Mm. He's he's just, he's shouting at the crowd. He's saying stuff as he comes down the aisle. And he comes to me and he like looks at me and he starts mouthing off and pointing at me. And I just like laugh. I think this is great. I'm in on the action. <laughs> and the dude starts lighting me up with his fists. <laughs> He's punching me in the face. My hair's flying everywhere. He hits me like fucking three oh, times. Actually, properly punches. Yeah, you. he like fucking laid me out, man. The and fuck? I was like, I was like, what the fuck just happened? And like, it was so weird because like I was like sat here, and my dad's friends were like sat opposite, kind of thing. That was the thought. Was and they were, wrestling? they were like, this is really good, good because it's like, it's like, it's real. You know what I mean? This is really good because Matt's getting punched in the face. I yes. am. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that's thrilling. But I don't know what happened there. I sometimes wonder if. He'd, he'd got mistaken or he'd seen someone somebody else might have shouted who something and he like just me. assumed it was you it was maybe the hair I think maybe with the hair maybe assumed I was maybe something to do with it or whatever yeah, I'm saying maybe someone shouted something was, and he just assumed it was you it was you. such yeah. a weird moment oh, so you never got to yeah. the bottom of it then I never know no. No. well at this like I said the mm-hmm. company was only like nine yeah. months old and obviously I knew Matt and I saw it because I was in the ring yeah. and I was like mm-hmm. what the fuck just happened there oh you lit me up yeah. you like I really got lit up I remember I saw I clip I was like shit man so you didn't get a chance to ask the guy what was going on he apologized yeah mm-hmm. but he apologized backstage he was like oh really because yeah. to be fair mm-hmm. and this is the craziest thing he's like the nicest guy ever in like yeah. real life uh, it's so <laughs> weird. only that could happen to me though like. it was yeah it was it was meant it was it was, he was luckily, like, he's luckily like, i'm Matt never saw, coming to this wrestling promotion uh, ever again my <laughs> no. kind, kind of saw the funny stuff i mean now he yeah. didn't at the time he really yeah. didn't at the time because i now, thought really pissed like, i thought like really pissed him off or something because i was like man have i like have I, have, I, have I said something or did does he think I've done something like before the show or like I was like man like what the fuck yeah you know it was so I mean? weird it, but um, but obviously mm-hmm. if you come to a show that isn't going to happen to you just so you know people no. listening <laughs> no, I, <laughs> it was so weird I, at the time like not nothing like that has ever happened since it was like it was just like an anomaly do you yeah, know, yeah. Like, do you know no, I honestly on? what I honestly think it was I think he mistook me for Billy. I don't know why, but yeah. Wild Wild Bill was wrestling that he was, night. He was, yeah. And he's kind of like, have you ever heard uh, yeah, Billy yeah, Campbell? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if you'd only took a glimpse of him, I've got the hair and the beard kind of thing. Yeah. And I wonder if he hadn't quite collared and he saw me and he thought... Does he not like him? Like, <laughs> Well, Billy was <laughs> like on the show uh, as like a baby face as well. Yeah, so it yeah. could quite possibly mm-hmm. have just been that he mm-hmm. thought, oh, that's that dude who was wrestling earlier mm, yeah i'll give him a smack <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, let's just, I let's just establish up, myself because uh, like billy was like top yeah. one of the top faces at that point mm-hmm. god i miss billy so, i know he should come back you really so, should yeah. really come back. what was the other story there's two oh, th- you, you won't be aware of this story i don't know i've got a really intrigued but, um, yeah. <laughs> so i i, I kind of knew will from the shows you know what i mean this was before i knew you and I was saying to him, I was like, hey, man, I'd like to, I'd love to, like, referee a match someday, you know what I mean? He was like, yeah, like, the, the next show will get you to referee. So, like, it's coming up to the, the, the show, and I, I knew nothing about, like, refereeing, right? I'm the same as you, I knew in my mind, I was like, what could go this wrong? is great. So, i tell you what I watched, I watched the Stone Cold Steve Austin match with Bret Hart, right? You know, <laughs> right? You know Ken Shamrock's, like, the, get the special mm-hmm. guest enforcer? I was like, I'm going to buy one of them skimpy wrestling tops with the, <laughs> oh the skimpy, God. like, little pants, I'm going to juice up for it, I'm going to take a load of, like, steroids and, like, juice what, up for it. the stripy ones? Yeah, right? So was, you look like you work at Foot Locker? <laughs> yeah right so look at ken shamrock during this match i was like i'm gonna be like that kind of thing and it was like building up to like that show and like i'd messaged him about it and he was like oh like i'm, I'm really sorry man like i completely forgot we got this other guy to do it kind of thing at that point i think i'd only seen you around kind of thing because uh-huh. this was the very early days yeah more than likely and he sent me a picture of you and i was like so wounded about it i'm like he got my gig man oh, like no. he got my gig like i, I so wanted to do that show oh. but like so you're both sort of after the same sort of thing in the beginning yeah yeah, yeah. you should I, still come down and do it you think please do maybe yeah maybe the skimpy top as actually, well and the little pants we and... actually need referees now because really? like our best referee <laughs> yeah. has um started wrestling 
Oh, oh no! Way. And uh, yeah, he's really good. He's got at too it, big yeah. for his boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, instead of referee, he starts panning people yeah. in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he's he's really good as well. Like he like he was like mm. uh, he was always like the fan favorite referee. You know, like you know Monty. Yeah, of course. Yeah, man. like heart. Gold. He's going to be a miss as a referee, though. Yeah, but he's such an addition as a wrestler. It's mm-hmm. it's insane. Like how is he skilled? Popular he is. Yeah, it's. I mean, he's really good. Yeah. He what kind of a wrestler well. is he? Is he a high well, flyer or? He's like he's kind of mm-hmm. like just a he's like an underdog type of character. It's like Foley kind of thing. Yeah. Well, he's yeah, tagging Terry with kind of Carnage, who's mm-hmm. so them two were just like your two everyday men, you know, and mm-hmm. they're just like work together as like a fantastic tag team and they won the tag yeah. belts on saturday and the place just erupted like fucking, yeah they were, they were over then yeah oh, yeah yeah it was mental so i was fantastic. gonna ask how where do you even begin about sort of working your way up getting bigger and bigger people to wrestle for you so where do you have... in, in terms of the growth of the, the yeah. company yeah so so after that show that matt was at the, is that the one where he got attacked? That's the one. You know, that one there. It's him. He kicked it all off. He did. After that yeah. show. After that. It, was like, <laughs> it went ECW. <laughs> yeah. we, um, we, so we ran shows in the Harrowby Community Centre, and yeah. we wanted to expand it a bit. Mm. So around about this mm-hmm. time, the venue was just opening, and I think it just turned from, I can't remember what it was called. It was like, I think it might have been called The Wall or something. It was like a house mm-hmm. nightclub kind of thing the yeah. venue in town in carlisle anyway and um i said to will like we should really look at um putting a show on in here yeah because it was like a there was like this really weird metal night on once like a, mm-hmm. a nightclub and it, i can't remember what it was called it was a like club criminal it was called oh yeah I know do you crazy. remember that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and uh lags from gallows did a dj really? set there was like a bouncy castle indoors <laughs> That wasn't tapped down. It was so different. Where was I? Oh my God. How did I not know about this? Do you not remember? Do you not know about this? No, this oh, it was no it was sounds mental. Like, how long ago was this? Like, that sounds like injury like, claim central. I, w- <laughs> I want to say it was uh, at least six years ago, maybe longer. Shit. So and they had That's like nice. um, they had like fire dancers on the stage, mm-hmm. and they had what's those things where they've got the chainsaws and the they do the bits with the chainsaws and it brings off the sparks. Do you know what oh, I, mean? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I have no idea what it's called, but I know what you mean. They had that, yeah. and they had this. They had this bouncy castle, which you had to take mm. your shoes off. To be fair, to get on, so that was a little bit of safety at least. <laughs> take your shoes off. Yeah. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah, but you're allowed on with your drinks. You know, apart yeah. from that, you had to take. Your, oh, there was like bouncers there. <laughs> with your drinks. There was like <laughs> bouncers there. Could you, get, could you jump across <laughs> and accidentally <laughs> blast somebody? I remember yeah, going like... on there with a drink, but the bouncer was like, "No, you've got to take your shoes off." <laughs> but so you can come in with your bottle. All right, that's, that's but yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, Sh- shoes. Yeah, because no, no, no. what, what we don't want, we don't want people getting beaten to death with their own shoes. But you can clap yeah. them in the face. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sure, and right. there was no like control mm-hmm. of this bouncy. It was indoors, bouncy castle indoors mm-hmm. at a nightclub. What could go wrong? <laughs> and uh, I remember it. How and, did they get insurance for this? Like, uh, well, it never happened again. The club just disappeared the next day. Yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're walking around like. No, there's no club here. Man. Yeah, no, like, no. this is like Shit. a one and done night, like kind of thing. And people, uh, people, was, people disappeared after that. <laughs> yeah. but it was really good. Left it the was country. like yeah. there was uh, a ca- like the way I've described it now is if it never happened on a drum dish. So it was candy floss machines. So it was like yeah. free what candy the? floss. Was this not a weird trip or something? This was a legitimate <laughs> night. Yeah, it was like. But anyway, so we're on the uh-huh. um, it was a bounty castle, and, and the bounty castle tipped over. Like oh, man. whilst everyone was in it, and it wasn't tied down. It oh, was, man. it was such a good night. But wow. during this night, <laughs> we were like yeah. standing where the um, kind of oh, it's like you know where the the steps are up into the second level yeah, of right. the menu. Mm-hmm, sure. And uh, I was there mm-hmm. with uh, friend Phil, and I kind of said, "This would be an f- awesome place for a wrestling show because you've got like the entrance way there, mm-hmm. can put the ring there, and have like." all the people around it mm. it was like exactly yeah. what it is mm-hmm. now like how it's out now i was like this would be like perfect to put a wrestling show on in here and it's so central it's like over the road from weatherspoons mm-hmm. and everything so like well, maybe this would be a go- worth a go so I kind of said well should we look at putting a show on in this venue mm-hmm. and um it was paul cassieri who had it at that time i think had yeah. the venue i think will already knew him mm-hmm. and um so we put a show on and the, it drew like a hundred and 40 people or maybe slightly less but it was pretty good yeah. it's good for that you know that good for that because t- we've gone from what like could it hold the venue can hold mm-hmm. standing about 800 i think mm-hmm. are you still there now yeah 
Yeah, right. but with the with the ringing and the seats, mm -hmm. the most we've had in was like 450 and like that yeah. was dangerously Who full. Who was that for? Was that, that was last year for the Mustache Mountain show. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was mm. like... Mustache mu mu Oh, yeah. We had uh, mm -hmm. a tag team called Mustache Mountain Brilliant. and they both got mustaches. Mm -hmm. That's about it, really. That's yeah. why we've got most of them. <laughs> so, that's good enough. That. Deep pool of names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Easy gimmick. <laughs> so, yeah, we ran that, and it was like mm -hmm. it was like 140 people in, which was a huge step up from what we had done, like 120 yeah. or so, 100, 100 people. And um, we're like, fuck, this is amazing. Like, this is like as good, and the crowd was so hot. I think because mm. there was a bar in there, it was it appealed to more adults. So it was, it, although it's a family show, it attracted more yeah. adults, which mm -hmm. kind of garnered a more, like, a better atmosphere. Of course, man. And um, so we ran it again two or three months later, November 2014, mm -hmm. and Paul London was on that show. On that show was like, really. See, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah so. Right. so I'm not massive on wrestling. Like I used to be, but not anymore. But, but I've heard yeah, of him. Paul <laughs> well, this is London. the thing where, because I, I keep seeing all these wrestlers, I, go, I know him, I know him. I was like, how the hell are they getting these guys? Like, yeah. yeah. So impressive. Paul London was like a bit of a stab in the dark because he was already over here with Brian Kendrick, his tag partner. Right, yeah. And mm -hmm. then he came over and did it um, and we basically booked him through another promoter at the at that time, and um, he came and we drew like two fifty, two hundred and fifty, like within. Um, so the crowd like doubled, mm -hmm. you know, because mainly because Paul London was on. But I think because word had spread that there was a bar, it's a good night. So well, like just, just organic word of mouth, pretty much just doubled yeah, like, course, ever, and then ever since then, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I think the lowest crowd we've we've got in there is like one forty. But it can, you know, it's averaged usually about between two hundred and three hundred people mm -hmm. every month. It's run. We've run it every single month for the past, or well, since November twenty fourteen. Yeah. Oh, so is that, is it one show a month. One show a month, yeah. Apart so, from in January. So do you do like you keep stories running per episode? Like, yeah, yeah. Like so like TV show. Essentially, like every month is like, I suppose you can get, like count it as a pay per view or a right. uh, episode of right, Raw. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. like, yeah. there's there's one show. And you know, the matches happen and everything. Storylines progress at that show mm -hmm. and then kind of leads on to the next show. Right, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so on and so forth. And that's been happening yeah. for the past four years. Bloody hell, that's So mad. what are your averages attendance now? Uh, it's about 200 a month. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Good. And then, but if we get like a big name on, it can be more, yeah. you know? So yeah. like... It's an interesting thing though, that with like the attendance numbers, because it's like sometimes you could go... And there's maybe less people, but if you got the right people in, and yeah, the rowdy, it can, totally it can be such a great atmosphere. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, that show, like, oh my god, mm. it was such a such a disaster looking back on it now. But which one was this? The Hardcore Holly show. In terms of attendance, it I, was an absolute my, I disaster. I had such a fucking blast at that oh, meeting. Mm, him, yeah, like, I mean, man, the, like, but it ended up being like one want, of the I mean, best I am, ones. I am going to come to a show. I do want to come to a show. You should, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. I mean, the next show, I'm, I'm wrestling at the last mm. show of the year. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> shitting myself about it. But we can get to that. Um, mm. But yeah, like that one, like... I stupidly kind of right. thought we're mm -hmm. going so well here. Like, why don't we run a weekender? Because other promotions have run weekenders now, before, right, yeah. and that was like July 2016. So mm -hmm. like two years ago, was it 2015? No, it was 2016. July 2016 ran a Friday night and a Saturday night, and mm -hmm. Hardcore Holly was on both nights. D'Lo Brown yeah. was on one of the nights, and uh, like it, it was so weird, like. Instead of getting two fifty each night, we got one hundred and twenty five each night. Yeah, right. With only probably about Split thirty over. people doing both nights. Right. And I was like, interesting. Oh, that didn't work. Mm. <laughs> and so we haven't done it since. You'd think as but, well that they would come at both nights. You know. Like, well, yeah, 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 yeah. So you think maybe if you'd just done one night, you probably would have got, got both. We got like, yeah, we'd have got like the, the usual crowd, but. That was like, well, you got, you've got to try these things to learn, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, totally. And we haven't done we haven't done that since. Oh, yeah. curiosity, Bullshit, man! But... Like, because like you'll know firsthand because you'll have spent a lot of time around him. But hardcore Holly, like Bob Holly, how how did you find him oh, as a person just to be around? Really nice, like yeah. He so I brought him over mm -hmm. for a two week tour, like because I wanted to have Bob Holly on this weekender of a show, mm. and to make it kind of cost effective, you've got to not whether it's myself or another promoter, you got to bring them bring them over. Yeah, and then obviously they work like two weeks worth of bookings, and mm -hmm. then you split the airfare to make it affordable. Yeah. So I, I set this two-week tour up for Bob Holly, and everything from his emails to 
him in person like he's such a nice guy yeah. he's an intimidating motherfucker because Fuck he is like man. fucking yeah, he's got look about him. Yeah. jacked oh, like he yeah, is yeah. terrifying and like uh, wall, man. oh he's like yeah and he was telling me the um, old breed man where they just like a fucking billiard table yeah man. i remember when he had a feud with brock lesnar once back in the day Dro- yeah did brock lesnar drop him on his head or something yeah i think he, yeah i do remember yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't think broke he's a fan neck. of brock lesnar <laughs> no well uh, from the it sounds made for a good yeah. storyline but it was actually real that the hatred there yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i think um, broke his neck didn't it like yeah, yeah. Like, uh, i think a lot of people have job that. that about lesnar yeah. though don't they a lot of people have have issues with the issues guy. with him yeah yeah but Hey, the guys are fucking bit, multi-billionaire. What they say? He's a bit but... stiff. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I think the story went, was it Brock was trying to pick him up for a powerbomb? Bob was Holly it, was I, like... I thought it was like, or a tombstone or something that went yeah, wrong. Something. He had his head a bit too low. And it was something like Bob Holly was just like not going with it kind yeah. of thing. You know, he was like putting his weight in a way. He didn't yeah. want to do it. So like just Brock, just you, you see him dump him on his head. Yeah. Spikes he did that to uh, like... A-Train as well. Did Brock he like Prince Albert? He damaged A-Train's neck. Oh, man. Same sort of thing. He did a, I think it was a running something, and he just yeah. Yeah. didn't get there. But this was like right. in Lesnar's younger days as well. Yeah, it was like 2003. Yeah. So, like, he was only used to watch it. That, that was when I used to time, watch it, it, like, yeah. religiously every yeah. week. Mm. And I think after, not long after Brock Lesnar left, that's when I, I kind of stopped. Yeah. <laughs> well, after that Attitude Era kind of changed, mm-hmm. and it started to, it just became well, a bit. Yeah, it was like that time when, I think it was when Lesnar and Goldberg had that match at WrestleMania 20, and they were both leaving. Oh, that was horrible. And shite. But obviously, Stone, that was like one of the last Stone, like, he refereed to Stone Cold. Yeah. And then that was like this put the switch over when Cena was getting his big push and Orton mm-hmm. was getting there and and then that was it for like 10 years was it like until Daniel Bryan yeah, won the belt like era. that was it really it mm-hmm. was just the same main event have you watched years. have you always watched have you both always watched wrestling all yeah. your life have yeah you never gone yeah, away yeah. from it pretty much mm-hmm. I went away for it for about three years when I was in secondary mm-hmm. school right and uh but then people it was so weird because yeah. I, so when we went to like got in year seven and year eight it's like oh i'm too too cool for wrestling you know, <laughs> right, yeah. as you do hide the magazines and yeah. shit you know what i mean like you don't want anyone to know <laughs> yeah right. but then everybody like started watching it again yeah. like when yeah. we were in like year nine and ten i was like and we used to go out people's houses on like a sunday I'm like Oh, this is mm-hmm. brilliant! So then just got right, got right back into and that it. That was was that would that have been when the attitude attitude era was on again when that came back around? Oh no! Like this Before was two thousand. Well, um, because the attitude era is classed as when from like ninety eight, ninety eight to yeah. ninety eight to probably like two thousand and three. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But this was in two thousand. I mean, that when I oh, well, what what year would it be when I was in year eight? I'm twenty. How old are you? You're twenty six. Yeah. Would you believe I love a good bit of maths. <laughs> well, I'll, in a year, maths. I, I remember, 12 years ago. I was, Eddie Guerrero was alive. It was in Europe because I remember when Eddie Guerrero yeah. died, I was in IT. I remember seeing that. On yeah. The so that was 2005. Did Eddie Guerrero yeah, die? Because 2006 mm-hmm. was Benoit. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, year it was 2005. I remember that. Yeah. So I still watched mm-hmm. wrestling then. Mm-hmm. And I was, so I'd have been 14 then. So. Yeah. Yeah. These young pups. <laughs> No, that's true, crazy man. yeah makes you feel old yeah but any, but yeah bob holly was like a super awesome guy mm-hmm. and uh, he was telling me like he was he's i think he's still auditioning for it or still trying to get on it because um he was on stone cold steve austin's podcast not too long ago oh, was he? Cool. Yeah. yeah i think it was like maybe i missed that one i think i missed that month as well ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah. i was on holiday last mm-hmm. month and he was on so I watched a little I bit have, of it. I might have yeah. skipped that one, but I'll, yeah. I'll have to go back and check that one out. Yeah. Um, or was it maybe like, might have been a little while ago. I can't, it wasn't too long ago, but um, he's trying to get onto this, and he was still trying then, he's still trying now to get onto mm-hmm. this pro, this Survivor style program on Is that Austin's America. one? Is that Austin's Survivor program? No, it's, it's basically challenge. where they get a lot of celebrities, or not even celebrities, just people, into the forest and just say, right, go and survive for oh, yeah. Yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. months. Uh, but they don't, yeah. they don't... That's a highly original idea these days, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But I think they don't... The only way to, like, win mm. is to stay there. So, like, you could be there... I mean, maybe it's not quite as bad as this he was telling me, but mm. you could stay there for, like, a year and still not win. Fuck. Yes. So if you, like, after a year, you're, like... They did. I feel the, like I've won. What I kind of torture is this? Yeah. Like, you're going to be there <laughs> yeah, a year they, they, did one, they did one a couple of years ago. It was called Eden. Mm. It was mm. called. They've, but I think they've changed it to try and get some more notable people in because I don't know if it was the audience oh, was that good. Man. But they actually did yeah. it over a full year. So they start. They, they, from what I remember, they sent the people off and they documented the whole thing uh-huh. while they were setting up and <clears> the few, few like feuds and that. And then, so they made a series out of just the beginning of it. 
Yeah. And then the next series is they go back a few months later, <laughs> see how things have developed. Like literally, there was no one else there. It's just them, and then see how people have divided and fallen out, or yeah, got together, broken up, and yeah. all the things, and like just fighting over food, like rice and oh everything. Sure, people because they had people like they had doctors, they had like carpenters, had an electrician or a doctor, all sorts of different people that have different skills, and like a fisherman and a farmer. Yeah, and it was just I, I never because because it, it left such long gaps between it. Mm. I, I never yeah. I never watched I never saw the end of it. So I was like, yeah, just yeah, yeah. I keep it lost, to, I keep it to look it up to go. It's a good. It's a good. Yeah. What, yeah. They, what they should do is put it all in one thing so you can just watch just it. Just watch it. Yeah, I yeah, forget yeah, about yeah. it. So well, it's a good concept though. He yeah. was like saying like mm -hmm. be piece, piece piece for him. Like he was like I could I could stay there for five years. It doesn't bother me. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I'll win my I think I'll win like hundred grand at the end of it or something. Just seem kind of like a country boy. He's got that southern kind of vibe to him. He he loves like just going into the forest and like not like totally switching off from yeah. the world that's like brock lesnar does that like, yeah like I, um, I tell you something about him though right when he was was he wrestling a medallion was yeah like, oh i felt right. so sorry for him so that night. it was like was i'm like on the soul. front row right a medallion like chops like hardcore holly you know mm. and holy shit style. you should have seen the look in Bob Holly's eyes, he stared at <laughs> I was like, he's going to fucking kill him. And he just lit him up with like the hardest fucking slap you've ever had. <laughs> oh, it was, it was so... like his skin came off his fucking face. Man. It was just like, <laughs> like on the floor, like a pancake. But I, I was know. like, because I think to a lot of people in like a wrestling audience, like they think everything's fake kind of thing. But like mm. I was saying before, wrestling is a fine line between what's real and what isn't kind I of thing. I think when you see it live, that's when you and appreciate stuff like that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, when he hit him, it was it's like, brutal. fuck man, it was like, you can't fake that. Mm. You can't fake against slap yeah. like that. I well, was like, I mean, like mm -hmm. with wrestling, it's a difficult one because yeah. obviously, <coughs> do you know, it's like people, uh, you know what I love yeah. more than it? I love when people comment on like, Facebook, mm. like about, like if there's a video of wrestling on, you know, yeah. they take they take the time out of their really busy mm. lives to like say, oh, I can't believe you still watch this shit. It's like, <laughs> are you for <laughs> fucking real? Like, and they're watching you this person who probably watched like four different soap <laughs> operas. Yeah. Like, you got nothing better violence, to do with your fucking yeah. day. <laughs> What's the difference? But yeah, it's like yeah. it's the match and everything might be. Yeah, predetermined in terms of who's going to win, but everything that happens in there is yeah very real. <laughs> I'll tell you a match, right, where I was genuinely frightened <laughs> for Target Wrestling's talent, right? This was maybe two or three years ago. Was it the Red Nation versus the Hooligans, the UK Hooligans? Oh, yeah, like man. The, the, the Knight family. The Knight family are like a big British wrestling family. They're from like a gypsy background. They are, aren't they? The, right? I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, they've, they've been around like wrestling mm. for probably... 30, 40 years. Their sister mm. is Paige in WWE. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. there's a movie getting made about them. Really? Starring The Rock. Fuck. Which All is right. coming out next month, I want to say. What's it called? Cool. I think it's called... I think, well, it's called mm. Fighting With My Family, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah because what, they yeah. had a Channel mm. 4 documentary like three years mm. ago. And it was all about uh, Paige's rise to getting into mm. WWE. Right. And like they were tr like lived living like a council estate, and then yeah. um, you know they're, they're working the way on the shows, and then eventually they all get mm -hmm. a tryout, and Paige is the one who gets signed, mm -hmm. and it kind yeah. of ends of her flying to America to work for WWE, yeah. and she's still there now, so mm -hmm. it's like amazing. So there's a it basically is a a movie about about their lives because mm -hmm. it's a pretty interesting like story with with those guys they've done yeah. too much to probably mm -hmm. like even talk about the, they've been in wrestling their whole in, lives mm -hmm. and lived it their like existence that that's ev yeah everything like they are wrestling you know it's crazy but man like honestly like so the hooligans were coming up to like target right and red nation if i recall did a shoot promo uh, you know, obviously, explain what a shoot is for those who don't know. So, a shoot's like when you're like calling out, like, say, like, because the tag teams, the Red Nation were calling out, like, the hooligans saying, you know, trying to rile them up, kind of thing. Mm. But if I remember correctly, there was some comments made about Paige. Do you remember this? I think so. There might There's have been on like, like online and things. There's yeah. something was said mm -hmm. either online. I don't know if they did a so long ago, but uh -huh. they probably did do a. A video that was kind of their that thing was, of riling was people it, up, it? yeah. But they came mm -hmm. here, and thanks, the hooligans are really nice, mm -hmm. really nice guys. Yeah. And oh my god, they they got that was a beat. I thought that, someone was going to die. 
Yeah. Seriously, man, like you could have cut the tension with a knife. Like, because they just came out and they were throwing the stiffest punches you'd probably ever seen. Like, like you thought uh, you were at UFC. Yeah, they were just beating the <laughs> shit out of them, you know what I mean? Uh, one of them got thro- like literally power bombed off the stage onto the concrete. I remember one wow. of them got like, <clears throat> I think he got whacked over the head with a chair and he landed on the guardrail next to me. I was like, you, you're going to have to fight back. You're actually, <laughs> like I, I said to him in his ear, I was like, you, you, you're going to have to fight back here because you, you're not going to get out of this alive. You know what I mean? I thought you were like his subconscious. Yeah. Like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. really should do it. weird though. <laughs> they started fighting back, right? And it was so exciting to watch, man, because it blurred the lines between reality and yeah. kayfabe. Yeah. And it's, Those, it's uh, interesting when that happens. Explain you know? what kayfabe is. So it's like, mm-hmm. essentially, it's the, it's the secret of wrestling, <clears throat> I suppose is the easiest way to put it. Mm-hmm. So... I always understood it's like breaking character, is it not? Like, sort so of... yeah. So if you were, if Matt was a wrestler, yeah. if he was the Undertaker, you're not. But if you came, if you were the Undertaker, yeah, and you came on as Matt Adamson and talked about being the Undertaker and mm-hmm. the way we're talking about wrestling now, that would be breaking kayfabe. Yeah, like, um, yeah. or if we were having if a you feud, saw a wrestler in the lift and yeah. they kept character. Yes, the they're, right, keeping they're keeping keeping yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we were like having a feud now, if we were like having a real mm-hmm. blood feud, like on TV or in Target or wherever, and then we mm-hmm. came on here and were nice and pals, that's mm-hmm. breaking. Yeah, so I remember yeah. Chris Jericho talking yeah. about a couple of times when he's like been in a lift or somewhere with, with some fans, but because yeah. he's at the time he's been a heel, a bad guy, he's like been horrible to them. He's like, I've got to stay in character. Just to have like, to, yeah. I he, love he, that. He takes it to that. He K-fabe, takes it to that bro. level. Yeah. Well, <laughs> tell you who was like one of the best of doing that in British wrestling is a guy called Jackie Polo. Yeah. Oh, God, like, yeah. oh, like he's like a super baby face in, <laughs> in Carlisle. Like literally, like he's nicknamed like the King of Carlisle. Like right, now, because yeah, yeah. people just fucking love him. But I remember a story that he told me. Um, it was a few years ago now, and he was on a show up in Scotland somewhere, mm-hmm. and someone had uh, got a poster. And he was leaving the venue. So this is like after the show had finished. Yep. He was leaving the venue and this little like kid came up to him and Mark Coffey and him and Mark Coffey are like best friends. And it must have been mm-hmm. on this show that Jackie was the heel and Mark was a, a face. So, they'd so, switched, like, eh? so they shouldn't have been seen um, together. Well, yeah, but they were probably driving together. So yeah. it was pretty... Right. Right. Oh, <laughs> so, no, I mean, in terms of the kid, they're probably... He, uh, why are those two guys? Yeah. Guys? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this kid comes up to them with a poster and said, oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, Jackie, Mark, would you would you mind signing this for me? So Mark like signs it, mm-hmm. goes up, oh, there you go, Jackie. And Jackie says, oh yeah, no problem. Thanks very much. Signs it. Just about to give it back to the kid and goes, and oh, throws the poster man. at him. Just to stay in like, character. Just to stay in character. <laughs> like, <laughs> get in the car. <laughs> it's like, know. Mark's just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know why. He's, he's like, couldn't, he's he's like, like stood look, there. I'm supposed to be a twat at the moment, so that's why I'm being a twat yeah. to you. All right? That's just the way it works. He's just like, rips it up, gets in the car. He's like, off we go. Come on. <laughs> it's like, such a like rare art that. form, that, though, with wrestling now, because obviously obviously the curtain dropped on kayfabe and then totally. everyone knew the ins and outs of it and stuff. But to find someone like that who actually keeps doing kayfabe yeah. and lives it and breathes it, it, it it's quite astounding really so, I'm, I'm glad i'm glad it, it was mm. the curtain was sort of brought down on it because then yeah, it helps yeah. you appreciate it more like you like you should know that it's not real mm-hmm. and still be able to appreciate it yeah, that's what yeah, it's all yeah, about yeah. it's not meant to be no one's saying it's real no yeah. one's ever oh, said it's them, real like mm-hmm. say it's them, yeah. it's them people who on facebook they say about anything and everything don't they but especially wrestling yeah. when they're like you know this isn't real this is fi- no shit like, like obviously. That, that, neither's Coronation Street, but millions <laughs> of people yeah, watch it. People like, watch, yeah. Neither's your comment. Why are you fucking. You know, <laughs> I've always said like, that to people. It's funny you should say about Coronation Street. It's like Coronation Street, but with chairs. Yeah, so like it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that like, galaxy far, far away? Like, that's not real either. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a documentary. <laughs> right, yeah. The documentary, you know, it's fucking. It's a documentary about the Death Star. Did you ever <laughs> seen the film, The Wrestler? Yeah, yeah what, did, Ricky Rock, what did you think of that? I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I thought I feel that like was. Ricky Rock, man. I, I, I remember all these these people who were into wrestling comments, and it's like I don't really know. It's a good <laughs> film, but I don't know. Is it is it good or is it not? <laughs> I thought it was a very pretty accurate representation of what it's like, especially to someone be, later in life. Yeah. Totally. Like, yeah. Do you remember Brock Lesnar said, uh, "Is it Kurt Hennig who used to be Mr. Perfect?" Yeah. yeah, yeah. He always told him, "You've got to get in to get out." As in, don't stay too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's be- good advice. You know, because yeah. he because you because he would see other people in the dressing room who've been there for years and they're still there and they're yeah. miserable as fuck, mm. but they just got stuck yeah. in it. And it's like 
people like um mm-hmm. like uh rick flair you know like he's an absolute mm-hmm. legend but he retired and then everyone's like that was the perfect retirement right. at wrestlemania 25 against i was at wrestlemania 24 i think 25. it was 24 it's 24 cause... 25 was Undertaker, Shawn Michaels. Oh, okay. So it was, so it was 24. 20, yeah, it was I the same so. show as Floyd Mayweather, the big show. So it must be 24. Think it was 24, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. That yeah. rings a bell. But mm. anyway, it was like the perfect retirement. Like, mm. you know, he gets beaten by Shawn Michaels and yeah. has this amazing send off the next night on, mm-hmm. on Raw. Right. And then two and a, or a year and a half later, he's wrestling in TNA. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, are you mm. fucking joking? Yeah, you know? I still like, remember that promo. It was like, Ric Flair is yeah. coming to TNA. Yeah. Cross the line. Cross you the know? line. I used to love them promos, man. Do you, do you both still watch wrestling? Not as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Now uh, that I'm kind WWE of... WWE or TNA or... What's I the watch other one? WWE. What's the other one? TNA. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Honor. Yeah. 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 Um, I New watch Japan. His, yeah, New, New Japan's Japan massive wrestling. at the moment, yeah. I don't watch as much WWE as I used to or probably should. I think worst, mm-hmm. one of the worst things they ever did was go to three hours. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. The, yeah. Just two, I mean, obviously they did it for the advertising money. So mm-hmm. you get three hours of advertising. But yeah. it's just stretch, like filler, just stretching. Yeah. Stretching probably an hour and a half's content over three hours. Just like. mm-hmm. And then it's not just Raw as well. You've got three hours of Raw. I think SmackDown's three hours now. Is that one at three hours? Is I'm it? sure SmackDown's wow. three hours. That's like unnecessary. Then you've got like mm-hmm. NXT, which is an oh, hour. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You've got... Um, a pay per view every two weeks because that's of the brand ridiculous. split. It's overkill, isn't it? That. I mean, like, like UFC seem to be having that problem yeah. as well that they're just completely flooding the market. Yeah. With, yeah. With their own. Before you've even like sat down to even watch something else, <clears throat> you're seven hours into yeah. your week. And it's crazy. Like, and it's also like to go to it, it's a lot of money. I mean, yeah. UFC's, I think USC is even more expensive. How yeah, much is yeah, UFC yeah. a ticket? If you go I want to say like two. To get, a, to, get, yeah, to get a good seat, you're talking about 200 yeah. quid. 200 quid. Much more than that. To go and. T- 200 quid for your basic ticket. Mate, you could pay yeah. some yeah. bums to fight rafters. for that money, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Set your own UFC up. Yeah. yeah. Well, we... Um, it's a rich man's game. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> unless you're in the independent scene, because uh, we only charge a tenner, <laughs> yeah. but, you know... I was going to ask, so do you have anything to do with any other independent promotions? Mm-hmm. Not anymore. I've kind of dwindled down a bit my schedule over the last year um, because it was so busy last year. Mm-hmm. Although that kind of backfired this year with gigs and putting so many on late to myself. I don't but know. I was thinking like sending awesome. talent each other's way. and Yeah, so, I mean, I also ring announce for, or used to ring announce for other companies as right. well. Um, mm-hmm. So I did... Uh, what culture wrestling when that was when that was what culture and it's defiant yeah. now but i did it when it was what culture i um did it for is that, that's another wrestling promotion yeah 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 so yeah. where's that based uh so that one's based in newcastle but the right. two are all over yeah right, okay so there's shows in like manchester i did a show in manchester for what culture and there was about three and a half thousand people there wow yeah. it was at the uh altering my ice arena and mm-hmm. uh, i walked into the to the venue the main event was Kurt Angle, Cody Rhodes. Shit, Like wow. last year or the year before. Did you ever feel in life you'd be doing that at some point? If you uh, said to like, yourself when you are like eight years old, like, totally. one day I'm going to be like fucking announcing well, Kurt Angle. Yeah, Cody I mean, Rhodes. that was the, like for me, that like, was the what? that was the overall goal because I'd never thought, I would mm-hmm. still never think I will be able to do it as like a full-time job. Mm-hmm. But I always set myself a goal of if I could do one thing, I want to like m- announce Kurt mm-hmm. Angle. And uh, I never thought I would get to do it. And then obviously what culture, mm-hmm. I was, it was basically there was a show in Newcastle and uh, I didn't know Kurt Angle's coming the next month. So obviously I was their monthly ring, I, I was right. their ring announcer and uh, Adam Pacitti from uh, What Culture was like, yeah, so for this next bit, you just need to basically go, uh, you know, bloody blah, is everyone having a good time? Just point to the screen and say, here's what's coming next month to What Culture Wrestling. I was like, I, yeah, sweet. If he told us what it was, I would yeah. probably big that up a little bit more, like when I was in the <laughs> ring. So I get down there, I'm like, He's there going, here's what's coming. Next. Pretty much, I was yeah. like, here's what's coming <laughs> next month. And everyone's like, all right, turn to the screen. And I'm like, I think this is Kurt Angle. This is Kurt. And then Kurt <laughs> yeah. Angle's music hit and the place erupts. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, you know, and uh, I got to meet Kurt Angle before the show. Like, that was immense. Like, Bret yeah. Hart was on the show. Wow. You meet Bret Hart. I met Bret Hart. What was he like? Jeez, he's crazy. Really nice guy, yeah. Really? And uh, oh, went up, I went drinking with his son, Blade, who's oh, also shit. a really nice guy. Blade Hart. <laughs> yeah. What a fucking name. I always and, remember uh, Blade Hart in the... Um, did you ever see the documentary with Bret called Wrestling with Shadow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Montreal Screwjob. Yeah. Blade's only, like, 
six year old kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's like, like, he's like 18 and 18 now, I think. That is a good is documentary, that. It's yeah. yeah. really interesting. Obviously. Even if you're not interested in it, you yeah. can just, it's like a bit like a soap opera. Yeah. It's like, yeah. If you did what? <laughs> if you were going to show someone, like, I guess, Ross, Wrestling 101, like mm. behind the scenes, you would show them that. Film. Yeah. Well, I think it mm. got like slated originally by people because that was again really? about that time, wasn't it? When. Mm. But that was just people mainly were. by people who were in it who came well, looking yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. I wish they'd shown the punch when he punched Vince. Oh, that would have been yeah. amazing. Yeah. But it was, um, I was uptown with, we went drinking with Blade the night before the show and he was mm. a really nice guy. Um, like, Bret Hart obviously didn't go uptown drinking with us. <laughs> he was no, at the no. hotel. But I was speaking to Too him old. at the show. Yeah, I was like, I was speaking to like Blade at the show, um, say an hour or so before, before the show was going to start. And he was like, have you met me, dad? I was like, no, I have not met your dad, Bret Hart. <laughs> and he goes, uh, "Oh, come on, we'll go and have a chat with him." And I was like, <laughs> yeah. "I was like, Whoa. we'll go and have a chat <laughs> with like, your wait, dad." Wait, wait, yeah. wait! You're like, I'll just go and change my pants. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, "Hey, dad, this is Ryan, the ring announcer." Mm-hmm. And he was, he was like, "Hey, how's it going? How's it going, Ryan?" I was like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. <laughs> I was like, looking forward to announcing you tonight. Uh, I was like, just didn't know what to say. It was like, mm-hmm. Bret Hart, like, like, yeah. I totally fucked up because um, I said, so I've got to announce him. And I said, uh, I said to him, I was like, so obviously I'm going to announce you to the ring. Is it all right if I say uh, the best there was, the best there is, the best there ever will, will be? be. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember which order I said it in. But I said it to him. I said it to Bret Hart, and I just said to him, I just went. Uh, yeah. So I went to. Him, I was like, "You wouldn't mind if I said uh, the best there was, the best there is, the best there ever will be. You don't mind if I say, you know, WWE Hall of Famer Bret the Hitman Hart." He's like, "No, no, that's absolutely fine. But just so you know, when you're out there, it's the best there is, the best there was, yeah. the best there ever will be." <laughs> Don't fuck that up. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. So like, I'm like, it's the most simple thing ever. Like everyone in the world knows what it is. Yeah. It's my one chance to say it to things, the man. It? I can just imagine you like get some guy with like huge cards with it written on yeah. in the background. <laughs> right, best yeah. it is, best of whatever. Okay, go. I'm sure there's go like ahead. a clip of it on YouTube and absolutely nail uh-huh. it. So I'm pretty chuffed with it. Brilliant, like, cause yeah. it was, it was one of those moments where your heart would be in your mouth. Like, oh, I have to get this right. I have to get this if right. I get this wrong. I will never let this down. You'll always yeah. be like, you never. probably get that bit right. Then they go, Shawn Michaels. I mean, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And then like he came to the ring and like he took the yeah. microphone off me and I was like, this is amazing, you know? And yeah, so mm-hmm. Kurt Angle, Cody Rhodes is on that show and i got to announce it and i was just like it was the most mental mm-hmm. experience like i was absolutely shitting myself backstage for yeah. that match because like i'd waited like forever to meet and work with kurt angle of course, man. like one of my favorite wrestlers ever mm-hmm. and he was like my granddad's favorite wrestler like my wow. granddad wasn't hugely into wrestling but i lived mm-hmm. with my grandparents for like um a year or two when i was like 15 16 yeah. and um we always watch TNA on a Saturday night because, cool. <laughs> you know, with my grandparents. And my grand, and Kurt Angle was always me granddad's favorite. He used to call mm. him right out. He's like, text me. He's like, oh, was right angle. Yeah, my favorite <laughs> right angle. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, it was quite nice to just do that mm. and take that off. And I've um, never heard that one before. <laughs> oh, I didn't say it's good. I didn't. I didn't even dare like say it's good. I but uh, and he, I said, "Oh, was, was everything all right?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, you did a great job and everything." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Well enough," because I was like, "This is like this Kurt Angle, you know? Yeah, what right. I mean? It's like the greatest of all time." And he was right there saying, "I did a great job." So I was like, "Brilliant!" So that was like amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you could die happy. Die happy from there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've worked with quite a lot of people, but like mm-hmm. he was like unreal, you know, to do. For that. you of like Kurt Angle, right? Where does he rank amongst the greats? Is he, like, do you think he's the best or at least one of them? Like, what, what do you think? I think, well, yeah, I would say, mm. I'd say he's like top two. Who do you think's the best? Like, because like, everyone says different things. Depends just, what I'm after. I don't know enough about like, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what I'm after because some days Kurt mm. Angle would be number one. Some days, I mean, The Rock wasn't the best wrestler in the world, but yeah. he's the most, probably one of the most memorable you could like ever. To, you could just watch. You just know. There's so many different factors yeah. in what you consider the best, though. Totally. There? Like, mm-hmm. people think John Cena is a bad wrestler. I think he's one of the best wrestlers agree, ever agree, because agree, he's yeah. like, I agree. he's been... When I, actually, when I stopped watching it, I realized mm-hmm. I was skipping the matches and watching the bits in between. Yeah. I was like, I don't. I shouldn't be really watching this anymore. <laughs> a lot, yeah, a lot of people do like the more entertaining bits. More of the, the drama. But even, eventually, even that got a bit boring. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would say it's like definitely top two. Mm-hmm. But then 
you know, like Austin, like Hogan, like wrestling wouldn't be where it is ever without Hulk mm-hmm. Hogan. I would say Austin for me. Not, yeah. Best ever, Austin. And you got Eddie Guerrero, yeah. Chris Benoit. Just the whole, mm-hmm. the whole character just... just yeah. <laughs> that whole time when he's feuding with Mr. McMahon, that was just... Well, again, probably WWE wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for, for Austin. For Austin. Do you know yeah. what actually yeah. I was going to say, it's mm-hmm. my b- vague knowledge, is I think the feud between them and WCW... Yeah, yeah. The Monday Night Wars. Monday Night Wars. Helped mm-hmm. them. Because everyone kept it on each other's toes. Without yeah. that, I don't think they probably would have pushed themselves to yeah. get where they are. Well, yeah. now since they were the only company, mm-hmm. it's it did get stale for off a long the time. Gas. Yeah, to have I, no I competition. Think even now, too much creative freedom. I still think even now it's improved vastly. Mm. I know, think they have still a long way to go. Yeah, I think they've like improved in a sense that they are now acknowledging because for years so frustrating like Mm -hmm. wwe didn't acknowledge anything they didn't acknowledge tna they didn't acknowledge the independence whereas now they like publicly acknowledge tna Mm -hmm. yeah because tna is not a competitor for for wwe now no but they're still going so they're still going yeah but um 10 years ago there was a chance that tna would have been no yeah yeah yeah. strong they know their place they're not a place now (laughs) yeah but like they acknowledge tna they're obviously bringing in some of the best independent wrestlers now Mm -hmm. to WWE, which kind of makes it a bit not shit on the indies but like there's a lot of people who have left the independence to go to WWE. Yeah, but, but you I, would do. I always thought, um, is there not a bit of a resurgence in the independence and some totally. big names going, like yeah. doing the rounds on the independence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, like a lot of guys who, well, that's that's been the same for, for quite a while mm-hmm. now. Like a lot of people who've left but I, WWE. But I seem to keep hearing about it a lot more now, especially like on Jericho's podcast. He keeps, mm-hmm. he keeps talking about yeah. stuff like that. And I keep hearing about big name wrestlers choosing to go to do independent stuff because it must be something yeah. about this it's almost as if something's changed whether it, it's something makes them want to go and do independence now well yeah the, um, i mean there's guys mm-hmm. like um the elite which is like the mm-hmm. young bucks and kenny omega and things like that mm-hmm. and they make more money on the independent scene through merchandise sales because mm-hmm. they are like 100 yeah. percent create freedom of that's their like, well, that's what like what jericho did he did yeah. a, he did a match with kenny yeah. omega didn't he in japan yeah yeah he, so he was, could just, he could just it's freely he's a like free yeah. agent he can go and do that and yeah, he makes yeah. just as much money if not more yeah exactly. a lot of it's like you like almost like your work schedule as well we were saying this before mm-hmm. like you choose when you work on the indies you know what i mean yeah rather than WWE's, like that's the, a bit the, <laughs> the traveling grueling. mad circus where you will work 300 days a year or you'll be fired and you won't have a job yeah unless you're brock lesnar and work five that yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> that is so, he's, like, he's kind of broke the mold though because there's a few other people doing that now yeah like Cena couple. does that yeah. um, they've earned the right to do it though oh yeah definitely but it's like the well-being of the person like yeah it never seemed to be taken into account Not before. Back in the like, day, no. People like no. falling apart mm. and they're like, oh, I'll be fine. It's like, I think since. <laughs> unless uh, like your leg snapped off, or, like, you're not getting a day off. That's yeah, just... yeah, yeah. I think ever since the Benoit stuff, it's it's definitely got better. Like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. took it, a much better stance with yeah. wellness and things like that now. Yeah. I think it had to change. You know, as much as it, like, I hate to say that, but when something as tragic as that happens, where. For people who don't Somebody know, he, has, he, killed, he took his own life, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he killed his wife. Benoit and so had what, yeah, uh, he did. Yeah. what they call CTE, which is uh, like concussion syndrome from repeated blows to the head. Yeah. Where he, when they did an autopsy on his brain, it was the same consistency as a 90-year-old man. So, I mean, you can't, you could never say like, like, like it was awful what happened. You know what I mean? but there's some kind of reason behind it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think when they've looked at that, they've, they've, they've rethought the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like like Muhammad Ali. Mm. Have you seen those? There's a the thing on YouTube where the various times he was on Parkinson mm-hmm. being yeah. interviewed from when he was first came on. He was like, yeah. firing all cylinders. It's like 100 miles an hour. And like Parkinson can hardly keep up with yeah. him. Then the next time it's just like a normal conversation. And yeah. the times after that, it just gets slower. It's, it's sad, yeah. really mm-hmm. sad to watch. And that's just from yeah. Yeah. blows to the head. Yeah. I'll tell you something interesting about Ali, right? I think it was 1980. I think he was fighting Larry Holmes and they filmed a documentary of him training up to the fight of this Larry Holmes fight. That was one of the times when he should have stopped. Right? You watch this film, this is no word of a lie. They were shooting in the doctor's office, right? You know, like the basic tests. Mm. Can you touch your nose? The guy couldn't even touch his nose. Wow. With his finger. Couldn't. Coordination was off. They had him on the speed bag in front of the press. <laughs> missed it every fucking time. Maybe wow. hit it twice, missed it. Wow. And it was like... How did nobody like not have alarm bells ringing and going like they probably they did? What? But there's like, so much money in riding on that that mm-hmm. money talks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Make, it, make it happen, whatever. Fuck and he, 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 he was, for all I've heard, he's the kind of person who didn't want to quit anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they kind of they they could have stepped in and said no. 
you stop him. Mm-hmm. Like put his well being first, but they're like, no, no, we can make too much money. Let's just let him fight. Yeah, that's the good thing about. It. I think every sport now though is like is like that, isn't it? It's it's it's, the it's much conscious. better now. Even yeah. the UFC the are conscious. sort of taking into account head trauma. Yeah. Oh man. Because when you look at people like Gary Goodridge, man, <laughs> I love Gary Goodridge, but yeah. you see him now, like God, mm. he can't even remember yesterday. And he's such a great fighter, you know. Joe, Joe Rogan always says like, mm. it's a terrible sport. It, it shouldn't really happen, but yeah. I, I, if, as long as it's happening, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to watch was, it. Oh, well, <laughs> like two weeks ago or something at the at the venue in town, there was a U, like UFC style event, <coughs> and I yeah. was like, I was watching it, and I was just like, my god, like this should be stopped. Like, not like in terms of, yeah. I'm not saying it's bad entertainment, mm-hmm. but I mean, these guys were, I was like, this is like, as if someone's having a fight on the street. It, you know what I like, mean? Was it MMA? Yeah, it was in a cage, MMA and everything. Mm-hmm. And it was really but professionally that, laid out. Have you been but, to UFC before? No, no. I've, that's what you would, that's TV. what you, you'd come to the same conclusion from watching the yeah, UFC. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's, just yeah. it's so much more real. If yeah. You like, like, it's so, you think it's, of like, have you ever seen a real fight in the street? Yeah. It's, it's kind of just, it's it's like horrific. Yeah. It affects you. But it's the same when you see some stuff like that live. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. It's funny uh, when you're watching it on the... Perspective, yeah, right? but when you're watching mm. it on the TV, like if you're watching UFC on the TV, it's real. Like it's such a real yeah. fight, but it doesn't... I mean, if, it's, it's still then, it still affects yeah. you. You see a, a, a knockout and someone's like been rattled, you're like, whoa. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But to see it, to like, to, you, the, to hear it, to feel it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And we will, I was like, from here to where that, like, that mm. screen is there or something. I mean, no, it's about it's someone's getting the, the brains is, beaten. Yeah, and mm. like... It was just like so weird. That's to when watch. you sort of start caring for people, and you think, how, how yeah. much can you take? You don't. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I would like if you see someone in a fight and they win, you go, just, can you just retire now? Yeah. <laughs> You've done it. Just retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that's why Joe Rogan gets all. all mm-hmm. Did you see the thing he did with Brendan Sharp? No. no. What was that? He was he was the one that made him retire. He convinced him to retire live on his show. Really? Because he he'd lost like three fights in a row or something, and he was like, look, you're a friend, and they were like tearing up huh. you're like you're my friend it's really difficult to say this but I mean yeah. you've got to consider like how much Your more health. damage can you take you've yeah. got to think you've got a family you've got a future and then like within a couple of weeks he retired after that episode he doesn't want to end up like Bob Sapp yeah exactly the guy. I mean he's won, oh my God. won but like God what was it 14 consecusive fights or Tech, 11 did make you, a note of Bob Sapp okay uh, mm-hmm. Do you know who he is? I know Bob Sapp. Oh my he, God, yeah. we're going to have to put some yeah. links he, to some YouTube videos absolute machine yeah. but he just couldn't throw more than one punch when he was like mm-hmm. in his prime he was like a walking house. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know him? You <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, oh yeah. My yeah. God. But back then they didn't have they didn't have like weight classes. Yeah, it was just, <laughs> it's just a free for all. I've, some... I've seen videos of him fighting like short Japanese men. Yeah, well he fought because they're so quick. Fight. He's chasing them around the ring. Like, like Gracie. Did he fight a great? Was it a Gracie you fought? Fought. I don't know if it was it one of them. Been, it might have been Hickson Gracie. But it was someone the, who was like skilled yeah. in jujitsu and like if you place taking a bet on the huge mountain of a man versus this small nimble guy everyone yeah. was just betting the big guy but, but he was getting around on his legs and he just mm-hmm. he could just submit him because you couldn't and this guy once once Bob Sapp's thrown a few punches yeah. he's knackered he's gassed yeah. out yeah. gone right. you've got him <coughs> it was but like that's, um, crazy that was the thing about the UFC back then like in the mm-hmm. first what like nine years or so Mm-hmm. Like it was just a, it was like a free for all. It was just like yeah. two blokes in a cage. There wasn't many doing, rules. There was, wasn't many rules. I, no weight classes. I, I have to just, admit, right? I loved the sheer spectacle of it because it just felt like a Van Damme film. Like you watch <laughs> the original <laughs> final of UFC one, right? And Chemo's like oh, yeah. carrying out a fucking crucifix to the fucking ring, like a full on <laughs> crucifix. It's no wonder he lost the final. The guy was exhausted. You know, like, he carried it from the back to into the ring. <laughs> And then Hoist comes out, man, and just fucking strangles the shit out of him. Do you know what I mean? Well, it, <laughs> but, like, that it. would never happen then. There was another thing as well. Like, my friend had them all on, like, uh, VHS. It was a lot longer. <laughs> I'm sure there was a guy who came out, and he had one boxing glove on and just a bare, like, face. <laughs> it was like, what? What is happening here? That's like, allowed. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was that about? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Sick. Those were the days, man. It, yeah, they could wear whatever they wanted. Did you watch? Uh, you will have done because the world watched it. Did you see the McGregor yeah. last McGregor fight? Yeah. What did you mm-hmm. think of that? Like in terms of like, I thought the actual fight was a good fight. I thought it's been yeah. ru- ruined. I think he's ruined his own moment there. Do you not think? I mean, yeah. In my opinion. It's do you work. not? Do you think it was? A, I think it was a work. It, no, I don't. Do you not I think? In- interesting. You should say that, right? Because when I heard about it first. I, I was so sure. I'm like, this is definitely a work. But then when I saw it, I don't. I, I don't know. I, it's so hard to call. Do you like, know what I mean? Like, you can just tell by Joe Rogan's reaction because he was like, no, 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 no. He was work. like, yeah. getting really. The, the thing like, that- he had, he had his, mm-hmm. he had his uh, coach mm-hmm. and his other someone from his team mm-hmm. on his podcast like three days later of Connor's team. 
yeah. talking about it, and it was like that was not a work. Yeah, definitely not. The a thing work. that made me think it was was because mm-hmm. the guy jumped over the cage, yeah, yeah. and the ref could have probably caught him. And if he didn't catch him, no, someone could have. If you, noticed, if you yeah. noticed, he couldn't because there was another guy punching him already. Punching the There's ref. A guy, no, punching Connor. There's oh, a guy right, in a yeah. Gray shirt was already going mm. for Connor as that guy was coming over the fence. Right. So he got punched in the face with one guy, and then yeah. the other guy came behind in the red shirt. Yeah, no, top. no, I saw that bit. Yeah, but it was like, mm. also, this has, so it's never happened before. Mm. Well, mm. McGregor did it once. Did he? But he didn't do it quite as bad as that. Yeah. He just jumped in the crowd and like went face to face with someone. Mm-hmm. So it's never happened before, but it happened in this mm-hmm. fight. Like, you know, it's and the ratings like, have been down. The, yeah, the like UFC, been down. it's not been struggling, but it needed like someone. It needed something to make it, it needs, bigger. It needs John Jones to come back. Is what it needs. And <laughs> you could just see Dana White like smiling, like thinking, "This is yeah. this is this rematch is going to be the biggest rematch in the history of any." No, no, the, 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 there might not be a rematch. Do you not think? Ah, certainly think not. Certainly not. Suspended right now. Certainly not straight away. Oh. He's going to have one or two more fights before there'll be a rematch. I just thought it was a uh, it was Rocky. Three. It was Rocky three, they've you know. already got they've got John Jones coming back and they've yeah. got Brock Lesnar's gonna have a fight as well. So Yeah, yeah. Lesnar. I don't God. think they're gonna need it. They'll be <laughs> alright for headlines for a while. You know when her uh, Habib like jumps out, out the cage and he fights what was the manager called? Dylan Danson was it? Dylan uh, Dennis. Dylan Dennis. Dylan Dennis. Yeah, Dennis. That's his uh, that's he, his jujitsu coach. That guy caught Habib with such a great right hook yeah, he did. when he jumps off because everyone was going on like oh, I hate that guy. And then you you watch him like as as Habib jumps up, he just Cracking right hand. Yeah, oh yeah. man! No one, no one the even, guy no one jumped onto that. his yeah. fist. No you know that. what I mean? Like, like man. But, yeah. I, love I don't know. That. It's had. It's like went from having yeah. hardly any press to being like everyone's talking about. And because the other thing is like he's ruined his moment there because if he just let his fight and do yeah. the talking, he'd have been one of the great. Considered mm-hmm. one of the greatest, which yeah, he was, which he yeah. kind of is. But mm-hmm. now he might. Now he's ruined it by doing that. Yeah. The, the, how long have they been trying to convince the general public that it's not uh, barbaric and it's not you know cage yeah, fight yeah, and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Been all the years trying to make it you know it's mixed martial arts. It's a it's highly skilled athletes mm-hmm. fighters and to for someone to go and do that that's just put them right back down probably. Yeah, people going yeah. see you told you. I mean, could you imagine like mm-hmm. Anthony Joshua doing that? Imagine that he, <laughs> when oh, he beat um, who was that Russian guy? He just beat I Vladimir the, like, Klitschko. Was yeah, it? yeah, someone like no, it Vitaly. wasn't Klitschko. It was I can't remember what he was called now. He, uh, but oh, in, I mean his last fight. His last fight. Got, um, but yeah, I don't remember the guy. In general, mean. if he was like doing that, and then like the Russian jumped over the ring and started punching people, you'd be like, "Yeah, like this would never happen." Imagine, would it? Like, would never Jim happen. Ross like commented, "My oh, God, oh. he's got in the ring." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Wait, when it it's gonna happen. I hope it happens. Mm. Well, it's either gonna be Joshua Wilder or it's gonna be. Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury, versus man. Uh, Tyson Joshua. Fury, the fight. I mean, that's going to, if it's Fury, I hope it's going to, because it's going to be like the winner of Fury versus yeah. Wilder is going to face Joshua. So, like, if, if it's mm. Fury versus, I mean, that's the fight everyone wants to see. Yeah. Like, that's going to be fucking amazing. Like, that's going to sell out. Like, mm. it's going to be like a promoter's dream, whoever has that. Like, it's going to be like minimum 300 quid a ticket, sell out Wembley Stadium. It's going to be yeah. mental. Like, who do you think would have that fight? So, say, like, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Like, do you think. I actually, Fury would beat him. I, you... I think uh, I think Fury would win because mm. the only like that Russian guy almost had Joshua, but yeah. Joshua's pace was like mm. too much. Um, but I think Fury's just too. He'd be too. I just think he's he's got the pace and he's yeah. and he's strong. So I think he would be able to withstand whatever Joshua threw at him. Because someone was saying to me, they were trying to argue this point that oh well. Tyson Fury's not who he was because of his mental issues. And I was just like, well, his mental issues are outside of the ring. Yeah. He does he's not like Danny Williams where he has this problem inside the ring. He can you know, he, he's focus, he, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I mean like with Danny Williams, that guy when when he was on, he, he could beat anyone. He beat Mike Tyson, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But you didn't know who was coming to the, like to the ring. But I think with Tyson Fury, I I think he's in a a good place right now. I think he's on solid ground. And I think the only way's up for yeah. him, definitely. Yeah, I think I do. I do it's going to be one of them, isn't it? But it's going to be awesome when it happens. Like, I'm, yeah. I'll be going. I'll, oh yeah, definitely. Can't wait. <laughs> I was going to ask what. So, what is your role in Target Wrestling now? So essentially, it's kind of I want to say like kind of co-owner, um, okay. not co- more like John. How many people are involved at the top of it? Three. Right. Three now. So there'll be mm-hmm. there's myself, John, and Dave. Right. Um, John's the main guy behind target now with help from me and dave like right. so we do like i help with the 
promotional side of things mm-hmm. and, and also like in terms of like uh kind of help booking the shows and things like that and ring announcing and then next like month booking as wrestling. well yeah, yeah yeah we help i mean john does the main about booking. Your bagger. yeah so uh next month i'm yeah. gonna be wrestling for the first oh, time oh yeah i read about years. i saw this yeah in the fight yeah. of his life man it's gonna be crazy is this but, a one-off yeah well yeah yeah so <laughs> I, I haven't wrestled in four years mm, like right. i trained to wrestle and then wrestled and i was like pretty i wasn't amazing but i was pretty decent you know mm. i was all right i was in a lot better shape than i'm in now and uh, but i haven't wrestled in four years and then we've been wanting to try and do something for a long time mm-hmm. and now next month we're gonna we're gonna do the match and uh, it was all set up on on saturday at the last show uh, it's all been building where medallion hasn't had a match at the venue for uh kind of three or four months now yeah and he's right. blaming me for that it's my fault <laughs> so uh he's been putting his warnings out on books. facebook yeah <laughs> so we did some promos yeah we did promos on online mm-hmm. and everything building up to it and uh the whole thing was that he was banned from the venue on saturday yeah right. but would you believe he turned up like he got in <laughs> somehow he managed to get in how did he do that yeah and then uh attacked me and it was mm-hmm. it was really cool like the music went i hit i like faced the the entrance way he came mm-hmm. from behind and clocked me started beating me up and then the whole locker room came out and like made the save yeah and the crap like i was really worried about the whole thing because obviously I'm just mm. the ring announcer. I haven't wrestled in four years. There's a yeah. lot more people on the show that are far better athletes and, yeah. in my opinion, characters than me. Really? Nah. Uh, <laughs> I know what you believe. Look at me. <laughs> and um, so I was really worried about the reaction that it was going mm-hmm. to get when we announced when I said that we're gonna have a match. So I basically I challenged him to a match, and as soon as we did that promo like the place just erupted Good it was pop. it was it was unreal like i was even in the ring like uh christian who was in the ring with me who was one of the ones who made the save he was like oh shit <laughs> pressure's on <laughs> i was like as if there wasn't because i was like i'm under so much pressure mm-hmm. to produce a good match yeah and i don't want to let people down and i, and I know i won't i'm really yeah. like sticking into mm-hmm. training this next month and a half um and i have been uh training and more so in the gym this mm-hmm. last month leading up to it because i don't want um there's such a standard set now in target over yeah. the last four years of producing really good matches really good angles that i don't want to let the, the side, side down, down. Yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. there's a real pressure to do something pull something mm-hmm. really good mm-hmm. out the hat and i'm really confident that we're gonna pull something really special out awesome man. for the last That's show cool. of the year so and I've got nothing to lose except move. <laughs> your life, <laughs> maybe an, an eye, life. <laughs> an eye maybe. You'll be okay. So as if you weren't busy enough, then you suddenly at some point decided to set up mm. Target Rocks and put on gigs. Gigs, yeah. So mm. that was um, an idea I had like two years ago. When was that first gig? Because you were both on it. Were we? Was it like three years ago? Yeah, it was at Club Rock. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Like I three was, years ago. I was, I was drunk as shit. That. <laughs> that was good. One. I was, was good. Man, I got spiked with like yeah. fucking ecstasy and shit. And I had a great night. Did you? Honesty. Right. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I didn't know that. It was good. For like it was shit. Really good. After, Bad but... things happen to you on the um things I promote for some reason. I... <laughs> <laughs> Beat it up, spiked. <laughs> But yeah, so I had a good time. Uh, it was, it was good. great good until show. I woke up. Yeah, yeah. it was. Um, it was something I wanted to do mm-hmm. for a, a while, mm-hmm. and um, even like before uh, doing Target Wrestling, I've always wanted to like put gigs on in town. Yeah. I just thought, you know, I feel like I could um, mm-hmm. bring something a bit different to to the scene, and and the whole idea of it originally was to, well, still is, mm-hmm. to promote like the local bands and, and the local scene. Yeah. and try yeah. and attract bigger names to up. the town yeah mm-hmm. and basically take everything that i'd, t- I'd learned from the wrestling and, and put it into the gigs mm-hmm. but i mean as i quickly found out like promoting gigs is like a whole different monster yeah. like the yeah. oh, it was like the first gig that I had planned was meant to be so much bigger than it was but then like it was it became so much of a risk to like run the original idea mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there was like that we just couldn't do it but the, the actual first gig there was when you look back on that lineup it was really cool it was in club rock because like dino more was mm-hmm. on hellion rising yeah. state control yeah um, they were on they were oh on. Yeah, yeah, were yeah, on. yeah 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 birth of clunge destroyer that night as oh, well okay, <laughs> yeah. that was it right that, remember, that was a i remember thinking 
I remember they the wrote a song about us. Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> that. That's quite yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Like that was that. nice of them. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> paying homage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like looking back on it for an all local card, it was a pretty mm-hmm. good crowd. It was, it was really yeah, good. Yeah, it was. Night, yeah. It was well attended. It was, it was awesome really good. Night, oh, sorry. And then, mm-hmm. um, yeah, but obviously I wanted to keep it getting bigger and, and, and things and I wanted yeah. to attract more bands mm-hmm. and I ran a couple more gigs after that just again just local bands and it attracted like the same yeah kind of amount of people which is really cool but I wanted to um, to to get the the local bands playing in front of like bigger crowds yeah so I t- tested it the market with um with a uh, green date who was the I was gonna say yeah yeah it was a big night that one wasn't yeah it was really good but had like no thrills supporting and um there was like i can't remember how many people were there it was like 180 people or something mm-hmm. maybe is this club so, rock as yeah, well? yeah in club yeah. rock so obviously it was heaving like in club rock for yeah. that amount of people and like uh so the no, no thrills got to play in front of a massive crowd and i was like mm-hmm. oh that's so I, I tested it again the next month with surreal panther mm-hmm. and the dissident youth were supporting yeah and there was like 250 there and like yeah. 150 people for a local band and i was like this is crazy so Mm. i was like well we'll try and just carry on this formula of if people want to see the tributes and yeah sing along and things like that that's great Mm -hmm. they can have a good night and everything but also if there's more people who haven't seen the local band Mm -hmm. and generally might come back to see them next time the tribute bands bring certain people out the woodwork they do yeah frustratingly because like this last year i've tried to book more um just more original nights with more mm-hmm. original bands yeah but they just don't seem to no. like you know and it's Draw. just the way the way it is i don't unless know unless you're booking like diamond head or someone right. well yeah <laughs> yeah well, diamond head yeah i mean even like that was that was great like you last have, like, week the greatest cv ever like you book like hardcore holly you <laughs> diamond head diamond head you met yeah. bret hart Kurt Angle. I mean, how many people get to do these things? Yeah. You know what I mean? How was the Diamond Head show? It was good, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it wasn't as busy as I'd have liked yeah. for the calibre of band that they are. But It was a Tuesday night, though. It was a Tuesday night. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, like I'd say like 80% of the people who were there weren't from Carlisle. Yeah. So that was a bit frustrating. But it was awesome because it was Diamond mm-hmm. Head and they really did... They were all. They were really good, but yeah, you, you just got the people. Here. Oh, it's Tuesday night. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, coming. it's yeah. Tuesday night. Like, yeah. well, they were supposed Curry. to. Come, they were supposed to come on here that night. Yeah, yeah. But no, he was logistically, saying, yeah. it just it just didn't work. They 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 thought we had Uber up here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The guy was like, oh, um, because I think I can't remember what time it was. It was like it was like uh, half six or something. No, mm-hmm. maybe maybe later half six. What whatever time it was, and uh, I was like, are you still here? Like. I thought you were going to do this thing. He's like, oh, yeah, how, how did we get there? And I'm like, drive? And he was like, oh, do, can we not get, a, do we get an Uber? Yeah, well, and I yeah. was like, no, no <laughs> not really. I was like, you can get a taxi, but I was like, you might as well just, you've got a yeah. van, just drive yeah, yourself well, yeah. there, yeah? There was a bit of miscommunication somewhere, but and time time got the better of us, but they've, they've booked in for next year. They're coming Brilliant. back next year. Yeah, they're really nice guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't, I, I've, yeah, I've mm-hmm. seen them a couple of times, and we played with them three years ago, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Really good guys. And it was Obviously, awesome band. Yeah, it's like incredible, like yeah. incredible band. And Kill It, who were supporting them, they were from London. Yeah. And they were really good yeah. as well. Like, yeah, good band. Mm-hmm. I was really surprised. But yeah, um, so that was kind of the, the, the thing with the gigs, just trying to um, to get more eyes on the local bands as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, obviously, everything's been going pretty well anyway with local bands yeah. in terms of like mm-hmm. yourselves and Falling Red and mm-hmm. uh, Colt 45, like some awesome bands yeah, yeah. uh triverse uh mm, sun explodes, sun explodes yeah. sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the one that was like really trying to think of just yeah. then and everything's going like really well for them but i just thought like some yeah. of the smaller ones get to play in front of like some is some, there any yeah, bands like on your mind right now who you really want to book is there anyone in particular that you go yeah i want to i want to do a show with them Can yeah well i oh, i'll tell you like this year i've almost had anvil this year oh, no. and i was that like yeah i was meant. gutted that that didn't come off because <laughs> like mm. but a one that um i was really gutted about that didn't happen yeah. and i really wanted to try and make it work i don't even think they're gonna um be back over next year but next time they're over mm-hmm. i'm gonna really try and make it work because i am in my heart like a young little emo kid who oh, you know who 
is a mega mark for my chemical romance you know oh, that was sure. like the first oh, wow. like oh, my chemical yeah. when i was like 12 uh, like 11 mm -hmm. like i really got into my chemical romance and that was like before mm -hmm. they released you three have to go to a bigger venue range. for that though wouldn't you well, it wasn't My Chemical Romance, but it was Frank Iero, who's the guitarist in My Chemical okay, right, Romance. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah, a yeah. tour earlier this year, and he was playing small venues. And um, he had like a few days. I was looking at the dates. He had a few dates in between. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, he could really come and do a, a show here. Yeah. I just thought that would be like amazing to have Frank Iero from My Chemical Romance, who headlined like Red and the Leeds Festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like three of, maybe not three. God, it was probably like five or six years ago now. Yeah. But and he's now in Carlisle. Like, and I was in Carlisle, <laughs> yeah. So that would have been like, that would have been, on the map. that would have been yeah. really awesome to do that. So like, um, but it's really just as and as and when it comes up, like. Mm. Uh, it's a bit of a, a headache though, scheduling and trying to get someone, because you, you can only get them when they're available. You can't just pick someone. Yeah. Like, play here. It's <laughs> often when they're touring as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, that was the thing with Diamond Head. Like um, that was totally by accident that um, I found this, uh, their manager who had said that the, yeah. she didn't even mention which band it was to be honest originally she just kind of put a mm -hmm. post on saying um i've got a plan and a big tour for later in the year message me for more info so i messaged her mm -hmm. for more info and i was like yes let's do that but they only had like wednesdays and tuesdays oh, left yeah, i'm like yeah. so yeah. it's a real gamble but it was a, mm -hmm. it, it was fine and it paid off um yeah definitely we broke even, mm -hmm. and we got to see Diamond Head playing Carla. It's just another name awesome. to add to your sort of resume of bands. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've only been, like I said, I've only been doing it for a few years, and mainly mm. tribute bands, like, um, yeah. and yeah. local bands. Lots of, well, so, that's what a lot of people do. You've just got to keep things ticking over, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, it's it's something that I'd rather, mm. I'd rather have, like, more original nights, to be fair. Yeah. But it's just... It's it's so difficult when you want it difficult. to be worthwhile mm -hmm. for the bands as well. Because you want so, to be able to pay pay like people and yeah, like, exactly. Them, and it's like it's all very well and good booking like an original night, like Harkin. I don't know if you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Harkin yeah. played in in Club Rock earlier this year, and there was only like thirty five people there, and I'm like, these guys are fucking amazing. Yeah, done some big, you know, done some big mm -hmm. tours and big gigs. Yeah, there. but at what point do you like well? Do you know, sometimes feel it's just the problem, mm -hmm. the issue of just li living where we are. Same with the wrestling. Like if you know, when you go to Newcastle, like, yeah, and, like yeah. bigger attendance because there's just more people and it's it's a city. So yeah, it's easier to. I mean, like, Cumbria is. is very spread out. Yeah, like I'm sure people if, if yeah. uh, West Cumbria would love to come and do it, but it's just getting here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such we a we are a bit mm -hmm. spread it's out. A, it's a difficult one, isn't yeah. it? Like people, mm -hmm. it like I've always been on the because uh, i've I've always lived in carlisle and i've mm -hmm. always wanted to to have like a really good scene of everything in carlisle whether it's wrestling mm -hmm. or music or a, anything at all like the the venues in carlisle are absolutely brilliant yeah. you know you've got like we the, blessed the, with some good venues the fucking brickyard is like the best ven independent venues in the country mm. definitely you know we've got all the way up from the sand center down to some like mm -hmm. small like the sauce or totally yeah. well, the, you, the, the venue and the venue yeah, yeah. it's a hidden gem that uh, but then you've got like like mm -hmm. say the sand center doesn't book any it doesn't i've only ever seen i've never seen a band there i've only seen comedians there both yeah. my valentine those, played there like two yeah years i remember ago. that yeah he's played and there man Lost 2000 who did we is man we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 played the brickyard there. more recently we yeah. yeah 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 lost profits played the sand center manic street preachers they played i was there sand center yeah and it was uh trying to think was but, it Aha? Did Aha play the fucking sand centre? We're really, really struggling yeah. for good gigs <laughs> yeah. now when you say that. You know, we've named no, three like, there. <laughs> if, if you could get them here, we have the places for them to totally, play. Totally, yeah. Because, like, what's the... If you, for a gig without the seats, what's the what's the sand centre? 2,000? Like, oh, I'd say more like 1,200, I would say. 12, but it's still a lot. You know, it's like an academy size, really, venue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, Newcastle Academy only holds about 1,200, I think. I think it's about a thousand. Right, so... Which one in the Academy one? Newcastle. Newcastle main room. Uh, we played there oh, in 2012. Yeah. Is it 1,200 1, 1, in the Academy with the seats? We played there in 2012 and yeah. uh, we were told afterwards it was about 800 mm. and it, that was that was about 80% full, I think. So Bloody hell, well, that's amazing. So, yeah. But yeah, drawing. it's like people like mm. say about Carlisle being out of the way mm. and I think it's like, it's a mindset, I think, that's... Carl, more, more so in Carlisle that I've been trying mm. to really push to change like um, pre-sales are a big thing like yeah, I yeah. had to cancel a, I, I never want to cancel mm -hmm. gigs like never ever yeah. but when it's really gonna risk like I don't 
care about making money i just want like mm -hmm. it's cover costs i just don't want to lose you money yeah, <laughs> yeah, break even i just least. don't want to lose money yeah. and and that particular one like the pre-sales are really low i had to make the call of like mm -hmm. canning it because it was i just knew the way it was going mm -hmm. and um so it's it's the mentality of people that i'm trying to change as well yeah. it's like buy a ticket and then that will help the promoter if it sells out or if it's close to selling out or whatever then they'll put another gig on you know and mm. that will help tick over yeah like this year has been like for some reason like really really difficult i know like mm. on well, the um, gig side of it gig side of yeah. it yeah it's been really difficult i don't know whether it's because i know a lot that, of people um, are last minute in last minute yeah but obviously yeah. i know that like i'm good friends with raz and he yeah. was on i listened to that podcast and he and we talk a lot about um because we're in the same position as promoters mm. yep. that it's just so difficult to mm. to get people to to come out yeah yeah and um but there's that there's that whole mentality of paying on the door and i hate that like it's cheaper to buy in advance just well just yeah, sometimes it's like a fiver if you buy in advance it's a tenner <laughs> on the door it's a no-brainer totally. but people you still get people like so, right until the end I, yeah. I, don't, I don't get that either i think people want to save yeah. money but and like, then people who are it's commit it's committing to uh, some, yeah. an event that's yeah the problem it's not always the money it's like with like carlisle you know it, you were saying before there's like less people and stuff mm. do you think it's because Carl's like quite clicky in a way maybe like there's groups and like because i i can think of a little, like there's a little bit these people don't like these people and then them people don't like them people i, I sometimes wonder if it's that because like nights out together, you know it's that yeah. you know what i mean like there's a lot of like like yeah. groups if we all just work together don't like, see each other and stuff and it was um like mm -hmm. when what, uh sixth played the brickyard yeah it was yeah. it was mm -hmm. yeah. it was in Kerrang, and there was an interview with nick uh in the brick from the brickyard and i thought that was like amazing yeah like, you know what i remember mean? seeing like, that yeah yeah and yeah. um there was some like i don't know i think Kerrang asked him a question and he answered it really well and i can't remember what the answer was but mm -hmm. basically the answer was that sorry the question was do you feel um a struggle to promote gigs in such a remote location or in a difficult area mm. and i'm like are you fucking real? That's like, the perception. That's yeah. the perception of Carlisle. We're on the M6. We're on the start. M6. We have direct yeah. trains to, mm -hmm. to to from Manchester, mm -hmm. Newcastle, it's Glasgow. It's not necessarily Carlisle. It's Cumbria. Yeah. yeah. But we it is a hope out. for everywhere, you know? It's something I don't understand, though, right? You look in the 70s and the 80s in Carlisle, and there was a lot of big bands which would come through, like the Ramones would come through oh, yeah, and Black stuff. Sabbath played here. And the Thin yeah, Lizzy played, played here and here. stuff. And Motorhead used to play played here. The Market yeah. Hall, right? Yep. And it seems to be since the Market Hall became like fucking Wilkinson's. And like, <laughs> Is that where like, it was? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I don't know why it could, it's been wrote off the map. You know what I mean? It's that, strange. Because it's perfect. That, if you think you're going from the Midlands to Glasgow, it'd be perfect to stop off in Carlisle because it's on the way. Oh, but, it's just off the motorway. It's, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think the issue is kind of, mm -hmm. <laughs> again, the issue is not getting the bands to play here. The bands mm -hmm. do play here, like if we try, like to get them. Obviously, the bigger bands, it's more difficult to get, mm -hmm. like because for a bigger band, like of say, both my Valentine kind of you status, you've got to pay them. They have to be, yeah, yeah they have to pay big money, and they have to play in somewhere like the Sands or the not venue. Play, or... Not gonna, well, yeah, they uh, may play the that... Brickyard if it's a if you can yeah. say oh, I can guarantee a sellout. Everyone likes to sell out on True. the yeah. on the itinerary. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, Skin Trader. You know, a big band mm -hmm. and they're playing the brickyard. They come, back, yeah, yeah. They come back quite regularly, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it's more yeah. so getting people to to come out is the difficulty, mm -hmm. and I don't know why it's oh, so difficult. You know, we've spoke about this many mm -hmm. times. Me and you spoke about it a before lot. about the mentality of people who yeah. spend silly money to watch big bands, but won't yeah. spend a fiver to watch five, five or six bands at mm -hmm. their local venue. Yeah, well, it was like the same kind of thing with Diamond Head. It was. It was a weird one because obviously it was only a tenor to see them and there was four bands on, including mm -hmm. Diamond Head. Mm -hmm, and yeah. um, they were like, on a Tuesday? You want me to leave mm. my house on a Tuesday? Yeah, right. Sacrilege. It's yeah. like, well, Iron Maiden played Newcastle on a Tuesday and mm -hmm. sold it out. How many of you? How many people went to that Like from Carlisle? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know? I'm repeating myself, but uh -huh. as I've said before, but like when it was um, what's it called Dragon Force, Oh, yeah, yeah, they played yeah. a brickyard, yeah. Well, I was at that gig because we were promoting our gig. They were playing on a Tuesday night for some reason. Was that a it, Tuesday night? But shit. it was sold out because we had our album launch the following Saturday. Yeah. So we were flying uh -huh. for that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't recognize anybody there. And I, no. I go to brickyard all the time. And I was like, I recognize nobody here. So yeah. where are you guys yeah. when all the other gigs are on? You only come uh -huh. out for yeah. these big yeah. bands. Well, I remember... Um, I, sorry, I was like, that's, that's one of the issues. Yeah. People mm -hmm. just coming out for the bigger bands, not 
They've totally just written off the independent scene in, mm-hmm. as music in, as far as music goes. I don't know if it's just like as well because like oh, yeah, you say only coming out for the bigger bands. It mm-hmm. is like I remember when uh, Twin Atlantic played the Brickyard the first time when they weren't that big. Mm. Um, it was like when I think it was before their uh, their first album. It was mm-hmm. like there must have been two hundred an EP. I can't remember. There was only about twenty people there for Twin Atlantic, who have headlined T in the Park, headline arenas now. Yeah. And uh, the second time they played, it was free to get in, and it was like they were just—I think it was their tea in the park warm up, and it was sold like it, free you couldn't to get move. In. It's free. It was like Man, a, it was the markers. It was when yeah. they were releasing their album, their free album, so oh, the album right, called yeah. Free. I don't. Yeah. The album wasn't free, but it was yeah. called Free, <laughs> and yeah. uh, like it was free to get in. It is funny like that the Brickyard because I remember Bonehead from Oasis played the the Brickyard. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, know. definitely. And there was only like three people there. <laughs> You're like, this guy was an oasis. That just shows and you the like. There's the, like the, three people. The gravity of the show. two brothers. Yeah. No one gives a shit about anyone else. Yeah. Like, it's, if he wasn't known as Bonehead and he had some normal name, you probably wouldn't know it. I know no. no. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's so weird, isn't it? It's just I don't know how we can change the mentality um, of. Of people, but it's it's something that I've really. I think I, it's better than it was. Do. I don't know if it, I don't it know, it know if the whole file sharing and people people just being able to get stuff for free online, they've mm-hmm. just kind of settled for that rather than going to see it live. There's oh, been a, there's been a so shift, sad, isn't it? There's been a shift somewhere along the line where that's mm-hmm. kind of because when we played in Europe, it's still like it used to be here. People yeah. always go to their local venues. They don't care who's playing. In fact, they love it if mm-hmm. like if like British bands, they love it. They go more people go right because and you know it's just part of their weekly routine. Let's Maybe. go to this small venue and. Maybe it just comes down to people are more lazy now and they're more interested in sitting on the couch well, on the, the tablet. Have influenced or... them. Yeah, like music's yeah. not... Music's... There's so much fighting for your attention now. Music's you know not I mean? as yeah. much of a priority as it used to be. It's, more, it's mm-hmm. become more of a, of a background thing. Yeah. It's so sad, though, if that's... You know, like, that mm-hmm. live music should be... Should should be celebrated. It should be like it should mm-hmm. be even like that. Should be the mecca of the town. Yeah, like definitely. it's live music because the venues are so fucking good. Like it should be the and the bands that are playing are, are are so good, and it's just like for some reason just like Skindred should be sold out. Yeah, for mm-hmm. an, I mean it probably will sell out eventually, mm-hmm. but it's it's only like next week. But it's not sold out. And you're like, this it's band plays main stage at download. Do you sometimes feel like, like within like the metal and rock community, like you look at other communities of music like folk and even like you could say wrestling, but in other ones, they kind of look out for each other and take care of each other. Mm. And sometimes rock and metal, I think there's sometimes too much of this mentality of people don't like each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not. Do you know what? It's yeah. so strange. It's so elitist and stuff because my, my friend Danny Hart, he's like like a bluegrass player, player who's played all over the world. And like you go to one of them shows and everyone's just like totally into it man and everyone mm. gets on with each other but how many times you be at like a rock show and there's there's an issue between people or like you don't get on with someone or they don't get on with you and i i, I don't know what that is i don't know why it's it's just more prevalent yeah yeah, yeah. i was into this band before you yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> that, 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 that kind of thing like, you, like what you like that band oh, get out yeah. of my way yeah, i only yeah, listen yeah. to thrash you listen to glam like what you like, you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it's that like kind of uh, shit. Um, when they used to book completely mm-hmm. different bands on the same bill, but yeah. they don't. They don't seem to do that. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, um, I think like there's been definitely it's it's mm-hmm. it's been a, a really fun ride. Like for me, booking the the mm-hmm. nights and everything. Next year, I'm having a prolonged break, just uh, from the music side mm-hmm. of it, and potentially a little bit of the wrestling as well. You've got to do it at some yeah every yeah. once in a while. You've got to have a break. Like for me, I've been non-stop for five years now like yeah. with either music or wrestling yeah that was um, the same with us it just got to the point where yeah it's just got to stop for a while and just just uh, take a toll on your life i mean yeah. if you look at, oh yeah mm-hmm. you look at me look at me there bloody hell if you look at what i looked like <laughs> five years ago <laughs> like what i looked like five years ago to mm-hmm. what i look like now obviously that's time but a lot of that is just stress and, yeah. and everything i just need a i need a, a break you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's um, it just put strain on you your personal live relationships yeah. as well though as yeah, well yeah. like i found that like with your friends and stuff and that you can't make birthdays or whatever whoever yeah. your girlfriend is or your that partner that was a big factor can, in it for us you yeah know what I, mean? I remember steve saying we mm-hmm. did an interview at our last gig at sos for, mm-hmm. i can't remember who it was for it was just because we got split up kevin martin did theirs and me and steve got put together and, and steve, steve was going i've been to three weddings this year I've never been to a wedding for the last... Well, how long has that band's been going? Yeah, like, <laughs> and he's yeah. like, you just say, say notice loads of stuff. I like, can't, can't do that, can't do that, can't do yeah. that. And to get to the point where you're like, 
but I want to do that. I should do that. Yeah. You know, these people mm. are like forget forgetting me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm forgetting them. And, like, and, and this year, like, mm. it's been incredibly stressful with everything that happened with uh, Ember's closing and then reopening as Club sure. Rock. Mm. And then obviously, did you have anything to do with that? No. So like, essentially, it was always I had the gigs booked in Club Rock originally. And then, mm. um, then it got taken over as embers and got redone, which was amazing. Yeah. I was like, finally, mm. you know, I remember walking yeah, in that yeah. first night and I was like, brightened up. It was so fucking good. Yeah. It was like such yeah. an amazing work. And, um, I say I was at, um, had my gigs booked for the year, which are still the ones that have booked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a message like the day of it or the day after, or the day of. Yeah. Or I was there the last night of Embers, and it because it was the Sabbath tribute night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was I was there, and like everything just seemed fine. Was it know? well? Was it well attended that one? Yeah, it was quite well attended. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just mm-hmm. one, but obviously they had the issues with the the drummer not arriving and things like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I got a message the next day, and it was just like saying, "Oh, we're, we're closing." And I just did not yeah. see, see it coming. coming so was it, purely, was it purely a financial issue? I don't know. I don't no. know. I mean, it's not my mm-hmm. place, but I mean, the guys did a fucking too good of a job. To, they put so much effort into yeah, it for it to just... It, it only so lasted sad. a few months, was it? A year, was it? Uh, was it a year? Under, I think I so. I would say like yeah. eight, eight months or so. Right, yeah. yeah eight months Because I know so. as, as I moved to Newcastle it opened oh, yeah. I came back and it like closed I was like oh yeah. man I've been a pure jinx of this place so man inside you know? is it pretty much the same just now it's Club Rock mm-hmm. pretty much yeah I would say it's very similar one yeah. thing that always used to let Club Rock down was they didn't have a good in-house PA yeah, yeah have they yeah. got that now they have got that now yeah right. so <laughs> I was going to say if you haven't Diamond Head you sh- you're not, they you, should you're not expect them to bring your PA yeah. <laughs> but, got, um, um, it was like mm-hmm. towards because the thing that was the last straw was when um I had the, you were there the Rammstein tribute night that I had on, yeah, and the PA just wasn't fit for purpose um, because it was the same PA that Club Rock had mm, and everything, yeah. and um, it just wasn't it just was not fit for purpose, and it was embarrassing for me as pro to have like all these um, people in and mm. the f- PA is just not up to technical scratch. issues and all that. Yeah, yeah, so Dom Dom Smith he mm. um, essentially like, just said. He was going to come and do the sound engineering yeah. from now on after that. And uh, he br- brought shit ton of gear with him, like mm-hmm. from his from his studio at home. And um, he rewired everything and new, new sound desk. Talented, man. It's very yeah. talented. Yeah. And it was, cool. it, was one of those, it was one of those horrible things because it was, it was when it was Embers, obviously, um, and we got it changed over. We did a free gig on the Thursday to test the PA system mm-hmm. out because <laughs> right, yeah. it was like I had yeah. the a Foo, the Foo Fighters tribute on the Saturday, uh, right, and yeah, I was yeah. I was sitting at Dom. I was like, I'm not saying that I don't trust you, but like I really <laughs> we think we should out. test this out. Yeah, yeah. So, so what was we were, the free gig? Who played in the free so the free gig, gig was just like well, bands that I knew would play. Like for nothing control. because <laughs> it was because uh, it was down, like, right. yeah like I was like I'll get you a load of beers. Well, I'll have a load of beers and we'll just. It's like you don't even have to take mm-hmm. it seriously. Yeah. Like you just play covers yeah. if you want, whatever you want to do. Like just play mm-hmm. out half an hour each. Just it's, a po- so. it's a posh practice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, right. well, if you're gonna practice anyway, why don't you just do it in front of a crowd? Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I had uh, from here on out. That was their first gig. Nice. That's like cool. her and that. Mm-hmm. And then there was state control and the distant youth. Like yeah. um, so, I knew. Like I also knew that if the sound wasn't up to scratch straight away, mm-hmm. they wouldn't get like super pissed off and yeah, like yeah. be like this. Is, Turn this fucking shit like, up. They know why like they're that. there. Yeah, they, they help, know they why they're there. And it's a good job we did because I think like the first, the first like yeah. five, <laughs> the first like half an hour was just like, oh my god, we need, <laughs> it just needed so ironed out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so like, and then the Foo Fighters gig, which is was just fine. Mm-hmm. And then like two weeks later, it it, it was closed and. Mm. It was just so. It was so sad. It was like, sudden, wasn't it? It came it was very sudden. Like, yeah. Out of nowhere. I think what I think everything that happened after that was a bit. Um, I don't know whether it was like uh, misconstrued of what act- like what was mm. going on and things like that. Like um, so, the venue was closed and wasn't going to reopen, as far as I was concerned, because I had to either move my gigs mm-hmm. or cancel them. Yeah, yeah. I was just I tried to move some of them to the brickyard, um, but again, just try to find dates that were matching. Yeah, Same with the work. fire station. Yeah. Was oh it, yeah, Carlisle like, Fire Station. Yeah, that's another good venue. Yeah. Got. Try, try to get like a Saturday night in those places is so difficult, especially like on a few months' mm-hmm. notice. Um, so, but anyway, so I 
messaged um, my friend Darren, who whose mum has the venue, Julie has the mm-hmm. venue, and I just said, all right, can I move my gigs here? And not all of them were available date-wise. I was like, well, I'm going to have to cancel some. And then um, I think Julie was like, oh, well, we could try and just keep Club Rock open. We just like reopen it as like a rock club. And I was like, well, yeah, you could do if you want. I mean, it's mm. historically not worked. <laughs> but um, Just because nobody's got quite got it right, that's all. Yeah. yeah. And um, mm-hmm. so she already had the venue and it's all mm-hmm. kind of connected, the mm-hmm. venue and, and Club Rock. It's all doorways and every, mm-hmm. everything's connected. It's such a weird... Cause it was yeah, it's yeah. a strange from, building that, that you can yeah, get well, everywhere from that corridor on it, the back. Like, yeah, because yeah. it used to be the Las Vegas Strip Club. Um, like. Uh-huh eight years ago nine years ago oh, yeah. so basically like it used to be the whole thing club rock uh the venue uh spice was the male Rouge. strip bar yeah the male then, strip bar yeah it's called <laughs> spice, 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 yeah. spice or something and, and then Rouge um, was next door Still wow Rouge. i didn't know that yeah and there was also um mm. like uh, a nightclub which was terminal one yeah um, oh man that place Fucking carpets smell like shit in there, like. Oh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> what would you think about but, it? Well, a carpet can smell very nice. So <laughs> like, ain't going back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, so Mom she dressed uh, as llama something. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So she she took Club Rock. Well, it wasn't Club Rock. She renamed mm-hmm. it Club Rock. Whether that was the correct decision or not, to that was her call to yeah. you know rename it that or her club she can do, you know do she wants kind of thing in terms of the name um mm-hmm. it's kind of does what it says on the tin I would everyone probably, knows what it is you know, like, but originally like when i i worked for the people who owned original club rock mm-hmm. kind of thing and originally um that place was going to be called south of heaven Oh, okay. And after the Slayer oh, yeah. album, told me that. Yeah, that'd be a really good name. An ownership, <laughs> like the ownership, like because they're religious, they weren't happy about the religious connotations of the uh, name yeah. South of Heaven, so right. it, it got scrapped. Yeah, and we had like no say in what it was going to be called because originally it was going to be Alex's, Billy Campbell's, and my bar. We were going to be on the lease for it, and we kind of got screwed over. There was something where we got shafted, and then it was like nothing to do with us. But yeah, it was, up until pretty much. The week before, it was going to be South of Heaven, and now it became like, Club Rock. That would have been a better name. That's yeah, a really for a good rock name. bar, yeah, yeah. metal bar, you know. That's but, a really good but name. But I suppose mm-hmm. Club Rock, you know, it's a rock club. South yeah. of Heaven could have been anything. Yeah. True, exactly yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, there so wasn't it, anything else like it. Mm-hmm. No, no, not in yeah. Carlisle. Well, I think the Bronx like tried to do a bit of a rock thing, but it wasn't like a live venue. Is that gone so now? The mm-hmm. Bronx is still there, right, but yeah. it's not a rock kind of. They're still putting gigs on. No, I think they had. I think they put one gig on. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't think it worked, to be honest. Okay. Um, but oh, that was under different ownership compared to what it's on now as ah, well. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, mm-hmm. Julie took on the lease and kind of just changed the the, the branding because it wouldn't have been. Mm-hmm. It's one of those where it wouldn't have been right to carry on as Embers. It just no. wouldn't have been right because that wasn't that was a, that yeah, was yeah, what yeah, it was. Project, wasn't it? It that was, was like, their baby. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like yeah. that would have been really shitty and. Um, I'm glad she didn't to do that because that would have been bad because that I think we should like what Embers was was yeah. was uh, in theory fantastic mm. you know it it really mm. was but it was it a really good didn't... story as well of how it all yeah came about. like the community sort of brought that place back and yeah mm. so it was like it was awesome you know that that whole thing mm-hmm. like everything it stood for the signage the just just everything I enjoyed the look of it and it just felt like really. Yeah. It felt like a brand new venue, mm-hmm. you know, it really did. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I think because obviously that's that's changed, I think that a lot of people don't know it's still open, to be honest with you. No. <laughs> yeah. oh, a lot of people are confused. Like, a lot of people are very confused. Down? Like what? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so people that was another thing because like obviously because Club Rock closed mm-hmm. down and turned into Embers, people just remember it as being a closed bar. Mm. So when I they walk s- past, they're like, is yeah. that even open? You know? I still feel that the perfect blueprint for a rock bar is Trillions in Newcastle. Yes. Yeah, like if you're going to like open a rock bar, just go to fucking Trillions and like take notes, man. Yeah. Because yeah. I just think it, they've got everything down to a fucking T. It's just and the right size. It's the right shape. People are, even if they sat down, they're, yeah. they're still near. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a bar. It's not yeah. a club. It's, got, it's not a bar yeah. trying to be a club. I always think there's yeah, a stark yeah. difference. That's yeah. where a lot of these places go wrong. No, and that's I think cool. if, Club Rock was marketed more as a actual bar, <laughs> a rock Rather than bar. Club, yeah, that's true. It yeah, probably would do better because there's times when you go in there, I would go in there, 
And the music would be so fucking loud. That's yeah. true. And you that couldn't is hear true. what anyone was saying. So yeah. everyone was in outside having a fag. You know what I mean? Everyone yeah. Was yeah. having a chuff, man. Like, like, cause people, especially older people like me. Like, I want to <laughs> yeah. be able to have a conversation and like, right. but with awesome music in the background, yeah, but not yeah, a thousand yeah. decibels. So like, what? Mm. I'm right in someone's ear. Oh, well, yeah. solid mm-hmm. rock in Glasgow's a great yeah, rock band. That is fantastic. That's like, yeah, but yeah. they don't have bands on. No, 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 no. But it just no. works. Yeah. Like, mm. they've got. I, uh, to be fair, like, I don't know whether this is going to sound controversial mm-hmm. or not because right. obviously I put gigs on in there, but it would probably be a more successful or not more successful, but a lot more well-attended place mm-hmm. if there was probably no gigs on and it was, but it was branded, as you say, a, a rock bar, bar yeah, with yeah. no live music. And it was, mm-hmm. um, and they did like maybe like solid rock do where they do like mm-hmm. cheap hot dogs and burgers and sure, right. like yeah, yeah. pinball machines. Yeah. And um, like, especially in Carlisle, there's stuff. no way any, like that. No, that would have all that sort of stuff. And that no would way. really appeal to, and like yeah. you could have like old N64 machines and yeah, stuff, yeah, you yeah, know, right, sure. like, like the retro, man, with it, yeah, yeah. like with cool artwork. I feel like that type of bar would do mm. really well in Carlisle. And then obviously you can still have a gig on once a month or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Um, but I think there's because there's confusion now of is it a live music venue or is it as you say is it a bar? Yeah. Yeah. What what is it? And mm-hmm. I think um, the amount of people who come to a gig and you're like, oh, it's it's seven quid in or whatever you know, mm. and yeah. like seven quid to get in. And you're like, well, mm-hmm. there's a gig on, you know, there's, there's, band, there's three bands, bands on. Like, yeah, but I'm just here for drinks. I don't want to play totally. bands. Like, yeah, there must, there must like, be some of that. Like with rock bars and stuff where a lot of people go wrong like people who own them and stuff they don't know fuck all about like the rock industry mm. do you know what i mean and like they have, i'm not kind of, saying they have this everything. like sort of fantasy about opening it and yeah they just do it. But, yeah like, you have to know the scene like do the your back research. of your hand you got to really know it well do you yeah. know what i mean i'm i'm certainly not knocking the people who own club rock now not at all but no, no. it helps if you you know the scene and you know people within it yeah and <laughs> it kind of know. always reminds me of um you watch Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah, yeah. Like, so what restaurant experience have you had? No one I should be a bricklayer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. And you, and you wonder why it's not working. Yeah, so <laughs> it's going to be like, and I felt like that is obviously mm-hmm. part of the pressure on me this year because like... It's a good thing you're there because at least you... <laughs> but I don't want to be the, mm-hmm. the guy who only... Do, that's why I've started doing a few things at the brickyard, and yeah. I want to do things at the fire station because mm-hmm. it's the target rock brand. It's you want the, to be able to yeah, take anywhere. it's the target rock brand. It's not the mm-hmm. club rock brand. That's you know? true. Yeah, like the target rock brand is my brand. That do you cross promote? Yeah. Do you promote your rock shows at the wrestling and the wrestling at the rock shows? Yeah, so there's, well, there's posters at the wrestling and things like that. Yeah, well, this is one thing I was saying about target wrestling is always really good at like old school promotion. Mm-hmm. You don't, not everything's not just online. No, no, no. I think that's it. part of the reason why you're doing so well. That's that's something that I've always, always done. Like since I've been promoting, it's like mm-hmm. you've got to do the legwork as well. You can't be lazy. Well, people just sit on Facebook yeah. and go, I've put a few posts out. Why is yeah. it not, why is no one there? Yeah, yeah, kind totally. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, like you've got to do like, mm-hmm. get the paper involved and get the posters out in all, all the bars, the takeaways, mm-hmm. you know, Somewhere I mean, like where we yeah. are, like we talked about how spread out we are, you cannot yeah. underestimate the w- power of word of mouth. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not saying I do, but someone mm-hmm. maybe in my area yeah. does put posters in certain places that maybe I aren't see them allowed. Like Denton Home, but man. it's yeah. like, yeah. see them in Denton but you've Home, got man, to, like, because like, you've, you've, otherwise mm-hmm. people won't know about it, you know. Exactly. And, and you've got to just not give them that excuse to not go, especially in a little small area like we are. You gotta, mm-hmm. Well, you did know about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was on. You just got to. You know, even it. like you should be able to have adverts on like local radio and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Because mm-hmm. Caroline Robertson at Radio Cumbria has been awesome to us. Yeah, she's been on the show. Yeah, yeah. she's she's brilliant. You know, yeah. and she always comes to the wrestling. Like she's wanted to Did do. She? Yeah, she loves it. <laughs> like Carol, I, the the first venue. She's show proper we one did. of the boys, isn't she? Oh <laughs> yeah, she's been saying for like the past. I want to say at least a year that she's going to come down and train and then wrestle. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be brilliant. I, oh, and I was like, like, you could do it for like, even if you wanted to, do, wanted to do it once and do it for like charity. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you could do that, like a sponsored yeah. wrestle. Yeah, yeah. But to do that, you need to come 
and train to be a yeah, wrestler. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. just you show, can't show up and up. hope no, for the best. It wouldn't work. It'd be a train wreck. Oh, it would be a disaster. So yeah, she's wanted to do that for for ages, and mm -hmm. um, she's always coming to the wrestling. The first time we had mm -hmm. our show at the venue, she was a special guest announcer for one of the for the women's match. Yeah, and uh, that, like... yeah, she she loved it. Yeah. She's a like, good class. I mean, like she, she probably wouldn't advertise on her show what you do because her, she's like in the uh -huh. afternoon. Her, it's her demographics like we've we've you know, much older people, yeah, so they wouldn't. Right. No, yeah. no one. Your target, your target audience yeah. is not listening. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get on CFM, yeah. and try and get some advertising on there, but to keep it I realistic, expensive. price wise, really, yeah, you just cannot do it. But the paper, like News and Star, has been awesome. Uh, yeah. Carl Steele, like he's They've always fucking been good. brilliant. They've always Absolutely been good. brilliant. Yeah. And uh, he, he always puts some at really good either uh, in he's the left paper. Now. Yeah, he's going to be a huge miss. He is. He is going to be a massive miss to that paper. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah, I'm a bit worried about the Cumbria Live area mm -hmm. of that because. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. see. It's a good opportunity for someone. Yeah. yeah. If someone, yeah, so hopefully someone good, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Someone's got the finger on the pulse of what's yeah, going on. He did such an awesome job, and it didn't matter what mm -hmm. genre of music it was like it was well promoted when he was i remember it because we had him on the we've had him on here as well and he was saying he used to end up going to some gigs that were not his kind of thing but he yeah. used to go to one of them so he yeah. could say he'd been experience there and like something just experience right? it so he's not mm. just promoting it for the sake of it yeah you know yeah I mean? exactly and he was just mm. a cool guy you yeah know? so that's been a big help as well like the paper and it all the help he's done for the wrestling and for the mm. and for the rock nights he's i forgot that was really a good awesome. one didn't we go and have a barbecue after that with him Yes, it was a really, really sunny day. It was uh, boiling hot. Your, it? Yeah, oh, your man. old house. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. Brilliant day. <laughs> Good day all round. Yeah, but uh, he's going to be a huge miss to the to the paper. I Could think. you ever see Target going to like MMA or anything? No. Could you no. not see like a, a one-off MMA show or something, or like I've a, had a boxing show, or like because that's kind of like the fun thing about Target yeah. is, which is. Because I, I didn't come up with the name Target Wrestling. That was yeah. that was Will's thing. He yeah, made right. that name. Mm -hmm. um, but I always thought, like when he told me the name Target Wrestling, I was like, "What mm -hmm. a great name!" Like Target it's a concept as wrestling. well. And, like we actually got a when mm -hmm. he, he's recognizable. Yeah, it's yeah. Iconic kind of you branding. Up on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like it's so good. So I was like, Target Rock. You're targeting Rock. And I thought you could yeah. you could do it with anything really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like uh, someone said, I can't wait till you open the Target Chippy. Like that's going to be like the best one, you know? You never know. You can't rule that out. <laughs> the Target Bad Sausage. That's the, yeah, man. It's just going to be... Target Beer. You could, you could do like the Target Cumberland, the Target, uh, you know, Pioneer mm -hmm. uh, Battered Cumberland Sausage Swirl. Now yeah, that man. would be something. Wow. I might mm. just do that because I can't stop look it. A bit I'm, like get, a, I'm getting hungry now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to write this down. That, uh, <laughs> that would kind of look like a target as well. No, yeah. put some tomato sauce on there. Bullseye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> target. It's a target. It's a target. It, it is, delicious. yeah. So, but yeah, I, I've pondered on doing comedy nights, mm -hmm. uh, but not even no, that. Would, not that would, I, would, I would come to that. Yeah. Target I laughs. Would. Target laughs. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. But this isn't it with like MMA or something. You'd need like almost like a, a sports commission as well, like yeah. someone to actually like. I don't know if you don't would know. your wrestling audience go to that. Probably not. But no. the so MMA that's that's, find a, you have to find a different audience. Well, mm -hmm. the MMA that happens at the venue is like totally different audience. It's a bit of a it's mm -hmm. a bit of a, a dangerous audience. Are they well yeah. attended? Very yeah. well attended. Yeah, I mean the one okay. that they had a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, there was about three hundred and fifty in. Is right. it a cage or a ring? Is cage, it like yeah. it was an so octagon? It's a cage. UFC, like an yeah. octagon. Yeah, Fucking yeah. Man. It was uh, interesting. A bit higher than a, the one yeah. that you see on the mm -hmm. UFC, but yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty much that. But it would just be, it just be, uh, like it's so busy with the wrestling and the music. I just wouldn't have time no, in the day no. to do anything else. And for I'd love to. If yeah. I, if this was my job, mm -hmm. then I, I would. But then because I like at the start of like last year, I kind of had the idea of. Um, making it my job and try I came with like a like a business plan to Did make you? it like my full time on, yeah. job. Ambition. Ambition. And um, yeah. it just never came to fruition because like again like we were talking about like if, if we lived in Newcastle or Manchester, mm -hmm. maybe it would have worked because mm -hmm. I would I had like the idea of like on a s like the first Saturday of the month, which yeah. would be the, the highest cost show would mm -hmm. be the wrestling. So just straight after payday people would come to the wrestling. The week after we'd do a comedy show. So yeah. totally different. People would come to the comedy show. The mm -hmm. week after that, we'd do a gig. People would come to that. And then the week after that, we'd do uh, like a wrestling show outside of Carlisle. So Sounds there's something on well. every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and then repeat. So it'd be monthly gig, monthly mm -hmm. comedy night, monthly wrestling. 
So it's not overkill of everything, but it just it's just don't there's just not enough people like to make no. that. I think a you'd, reality. Need, you'd need a bit of a team with you to sort yeah, of do yeah. to obviously all that. It's not So it was you, quite difficult to Could you do it's a like good vision a, though? It's a good vision. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but could you do a cross promotion show, almost like take Target over to Newcastle and cross promote with Yeah, it any, we could it, do. What's the wrestling uh, what's the biggest one over yeah. northeast? Is it NEW or something it's called? Yeah, NEW, yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I think if we were to do that, mm-hmm. the best company for us to do it with mm-hmm. would uh, probably be Discovery Wrestling, which yeah. is based in Edinburgh, mm-hmm. because they are similar laid out shows to ours, but a similar audience, and the but the talent is different. So we could mm-hmm. do like an invasion of them or they could do an invasion of us and it would work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think there's only a few, there's not many places it would work, but they would, that would work. So but cool. I definitely, they're, they're like really, That's really awesome, cool. That. Yeah. Have you ever had the temptation to put on like an actual like adult show, an adult, adult yes. wrestling show? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. to be honest, mm-hmm. um, years and years ago, yeah. before we started running the venue mm-hmm. and I, the idea was to run the Brickyard and because wow. that was like at the days when ICW ran mm-hmm. the Classic Grand, which was a really small venue. The Classic oh, Grand the classic, in Glasgow, yeah, yeah. 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 venue. Yeah, there was no porno theater, wasn't it? The Classic Grand. Sorry, there was no porno theater. The Classic Grand, wasn't it? Was it? A... I'm sure it was. There. I'm so <laughs> sure right. of that. Years ago, a fantastic venue. Yeah, but, but yeah. So like, I wanted to do like the Brickyard, mm-hmm. and then it would be over 18s only. So you'd only be limiting it to like mm-hmm. probably by the time you got the ring in there, you probably only fit like about 120. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. What's the difference? Uh, you get. A bit, so you've got a bit more leeway. With a family show, you can't mm-hmm. you can't swear, which is I don't condone anyway oh, in terms so of chair a, shots, yeah. blood, blood, yeah, <laughs> yeah right, um, right, bit right. more risque and the things you can do, right? Um, which wouldn't have been a monthly occurrence, but it would have been like maybe a a one off, a one off, yeah. or once every six months. So you haven't kind of done thing. one of those before. Well, we have never done one of those before. Yeah, right. it's it's called Target Extreme or some shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, a, it's one of those get things the where the Sandman or New Jack. Yeah, so, well, I suppose nice. it wouldn't. If to just do a one-off random one wouldn't make sense because you've got the build-up mm-hmm. of your storylines with the families. Yeah, yeah. the families mm-hmm. that would want to go. Like, well, to be honest with you, we've had hardcore matches in Target like quite a lot, sure. and we've had like the Monster Abyss. We've had Tommy Dreamer. We've had um, yeah Raven. Raven. All right. Uh, cool, so they all wrestled mm-hmm. hardcore. We've had like barbed wire boards thumbtacks uh chairs yeah. tables we've had like some extreme shit happen like it on the show cool, it's cool you've been able to like push that even with like a family show you've been able to push the envelope a bit with them totally. that's modes, what like WWE you know. does yeah show, it was right? yeah, uh, right. shit stuff. Mm-hmm. yeah so with the abyss show people mm-hmm. expected like it to get extreme mm. so when it did yeah. i was like well if people are gonna complain this is the one they're gonna cut co- they're doing in advance mm-hmm. you know we warned them in advance like this is going to get, this is going to be the ha- most hardcore match we'll have ever have seen in Carlisle. Yeah. That was a good match. Though. Warning. What, does, you the, kind what of does Eric Bischoff say? Controversy creates cash. Yeah, sure, but it was, it was even. <laughs> I mean, that was a great show. You were at that show. Was was yeah, that was, was a there. great show. Didn't Medallion get dropped on the board. The barbed wire board. Barbed wire board. Black hole slam yeah, onto man. the barbed wire board. Yeah. I was saying to you, I don't know if you, have yeah. you seen Eric Bischoff's new podcast? Latest podcast? No, no, I haven't. It's no. Eight, 83 weeks. Do you know what that means? No. Eight, three. The, oh, is that the, the night, duration of the last one? It was that on top. Yeah, yeah. Ah, right. right. The ratings. So oh, you'd love it. You, I, and does he just go like week for week? Man. Well, they just pick various uh, times and like uh, events. And yeah, just yeah, go yeah. Through it, Eric Bischoff, because the the Conrad, the guy, it's um, he's gonna marry Ric Flair's daughter. What's she called? Someone Flair. Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair. Flair yeah, yeah. She's her, a wrestler. It's her fiance yeah, who's man. like he runs the podcast, and Eric Bischoff's mm-hmm. like skyping in. And he talks about this guy knows all about. He's done the research because obviously you can watch. You can go back and watch a lot of them. Yeah, so they, they do stuff where like Bischoff <coughs> will watch it beforehand and then he'll ask him questions. Oh, he's like, okay. He'll say, "So you had this match?" And he'll go, "What the fuck was all that about?" <laughs> uh, Eric Bischoff's like, "Yeah, it was fucking terrible. I'm, uh, I don't know what I was thinking." He goes yeah. really into detail about everything that was going on. It's like for me, I'm not even that mm-hmm. interested in it, but it's the stories are so to. interesting. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Wow. I, I tried it and I'm I'm I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm hooked yeah, now. Yeah. I'm have to listen it's called to it. Eight, eight, three weeks with Eric Bischoff. It's it's brilliant. I'll give that I always find though, like even if you're watching the old WCW when like the the the, the script writing was terrible, the, some of the matches are still brilliant. It's just the stories which let them down. Yeah, yeah. Like there's yeah, some yeah, amazing yeah. matches, the but the stories the don't make any any sense. Like 
What was the match with Buff Bagwell with the Viagra on a pole match? Do you remember that match? <laughs> oh, I've, like, what I've the seen fuck it. Yeah. Was that about the Viagra on a <sighs> pole match? It was everything like... on a pole match though with Vince Russo. Like he yeah. was like the master of the pole matches. Yeah, you know, I think man, though yeah. back in the day we used to get shattered on a lot of content. We never used to get hardly anything. Yeah. Like, compared to what in America, I mean, they used to get everything. And yeah. Like, yeah. Did we even used to get WTW over here? Did we? It was on at the right. time. Somehow, I'm it sure was on I Sunday on Channel Five. They had a recap show. Ah, right. It was called right. WCW Worldwide or something. It was, just, but it was literally like the highlight reel. It I was don't like, even remember it. That was why WWE was like so popular here definitely. because it was they it might, was accessible. Mm, yeah, you can um, see it. And especially, I think when when WWF start here with Raw. I think Raw was originally on Channel Four. Then did it shift to Five, and then Sky One got it. Yeah, or Sky Sports might have got it. Yeah. Got it. It was when Sky came mm. in, that's when things started to change, wasn't it? That, like, yeah, they changed yeah, yeah. television overall, didn't they? Yeah, like, exactly, wow, man. definitely. I've, got, I've gone from four channels to 25. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Americans have been going, we've had that for like 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, in, in like awesome. 1980, in America, they were going, 28, 35, 44. <laughs> we were going, four. Isn't that hard, isn't <laughs> five, that hard to believe, though? Like 20 years ago, we had four stations. <laughs> four stations to watch. That was it, man. It was oh, 1990 or 91 when Sky came in. Really? So it's like 30, nearly coming up 30-odd. 30 30, yeah, 30 years. years, 29 We just have years, so much more choice now. Uh, it's almost, yeah. Wait, yeah, you said, I was going to say mm. we have too much choice, but a lot we don't. A lot of it's just bollocks. Yeah. So you just wouldn't mm. watch we anyway. We have all these channels, but I think I only watch three channels. Like that's all. I watch UK yeah. Gold, Comedy Central. I hardly ever watch <laughs> actual Netflix. I don't watch live television. All no. I'm watching mm. is stuff I've recorded, so I can skip adverts. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I only watch like Netflix uh, and Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares on mm. 4 OD. Oh, you just reminded me what yeah. I was going to say before about uh, how people come to music now. I was yeah. talking to a friend and he had his son with him. And his son was about twelve, and he was. I saw uh-huh. on his phone he had spot. He just moved his phone. He's on Spotify. I was like, oh, yeah. what, what, what do you listen to? And, and he's like, oh, I just listen to random songs. You know what <laughs> I mean? And I found that this is kind of a thing. Yeah. They don't like. They don't I said, like what's your favorite thing. band? And he's like, I yeah. don't really have one. They don't like consume like bands that. or albums as they were written. They, it's just random song, random song, random song. Mm. Like, listen to it, forgotten, move on. There's no sort of like taking in a whole yeah. band or. And like to go, like go, I said, have you ever seen a band live? It's like no, like it's not even in his. Like he listens to yeah. music all the time, but it's just random, 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 random. Yeah. I like this, I like that. And uh, we were talk- who's I talking about? It's like the thirty second challenge. They only listen to the first thirty seconds of a song and to make their mind up. Next, next. That's just pop music, next. isn't it? You yeah, but that, that seems to be the like general like consensus of how young mm-hmm. people are consuming music, and that scared me. Yeah. Like he mm-hmm. wasn't even in his head about going to see any of these bands live because. He only listens to the one song of most bands, and he goes on to the next. Like, mm-hmm. never. How old was he? Twelve. Okay, so but I mean, still, like, not even have like a desire to go and see. Like, I mean, even when I was twelve, like, mm-hmm. I think I'd still seen. I still been to like a few gigs. I think by the time I was twelve, I'd seen like uh, seen Busted. I want to awesome. see the Chili Peppers, man. <laughs> I was twelve. But so I had the thought of like, mm-hmm. so the only probably way you would get him to go is if you managed to get all these bands together to play this one song that he knows. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's, like, oh yeah, I'll go and you see that. It's because parents yeah. kind of cotton wool kids so much now. Do you think I it's, don't know. It's, it's I like just that, I, I think it's the way go out and I think it's like the iTunes thing where you can buy I individual think, songs. You know, fine with kids in general. Now kids are like just terrified of any adult. <laughs> it gets drilled into them. He may be a pedophile. Like anyone. well, there's that. There's well, yeah. that. Like, it's completely drummed into kids that everyone's either a murderer or some fucking. Yeah, you know. I, th- it's I think weird, that man. Um, it's weird, th- that is a good point though. In terms of yeah. he probably wouldn't have a, he wouldn't want to go and see a band, like because if he's just playing random songs, things music is so like because it's it's only like nine quid a month which his parents probably pay for oh, for yeah. Spotify. Definitely. So music is is free. Like as free. far as they're concerned. You're not investing yeah. in anything. Like we, when we were that age, or you know, you'd buy a record. You'd have to I remember buy saving up, saving up yeah. to buy an album because I knew it was coming out. Because I'd read it in a magazine. Yeah, and then you'd listen to that album. Whereas, yeah. and it would have occurred it to you to buy a single. Well, I suppose there was the, the odd you could single. You buy singles, but you wouldn't just you would bang, yeah. bang, 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 skip, skip, no. skip, skip, mm. skip, skip. And whereas now, that, like that's that's obviously how it is. But back then, we'd be like. I've got the CD. Yeah, I'm gonna put the CD in, and he'd read the lyric sheet. But it's also yeah, right. it's also the mm-hmm. like they're just picking individual songs. There's no, yeah. they've not got the product. They've not got. They're not looking at artwork or lyrics or anything. Yeah, well, that was part of the whole experience for me. Yeah. What, yeah, what I remember of primary school, growing up in the '90s, it was more 
from what I remember, kids bought singles, like album, like uh, like on cassettes or CD singles mm. kind of thing. Yeah. And then as you go to more secondary school, you maybe then buy the albums. You know what I mean? That's how I remember mm-hmm. it, at least. Yeah, the single was just like, mm. they if were you liked the single, well, you were going like, to buy the album. What were they? Yeah, were they yeah. a quid? Was a single a quid? Singles were really like, cheap, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a mm. lot. And you used to get some cool B-sides on it as well. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. bands were specifically doing things as B-sides to go on a single. Which yeah, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't yeah. happen anymore. Rem- remember, like you had to buy the album, and I had to put the album in your computer to then import onto your <laughs> iTunes, yeah, to yeah, then yeah, sync yeah, onto yeah. your iPod. What is this medieval, like this madness? Okay, you know, oh, it's man. like, yeah. Uh, oh, like I how mean, things change. My, you know, what's really annoyed me mm. is um, all this technology that is around at the moment, right? But because of the way, like Apple, like the monsters they are Mm -hmm. the way they update their phones they managed to update their software on the phones that is so clever that when you plug a fucking aux cable in from your car this aux cable is not compatible with this device it fucking fits and it's in the jack why is it not working that's Uh, apple for you but do they i don't even think apple Mm -hmm. sell aux cables so how am i going (laughs) to listen to my music in the car like so i'm gonna have to i've had to get like my car's full like old cds yeah yeah yeah. i was saying this to my brother yesterday i'm so unsavvy with of technology, I still have that fucking U2 album on my fucking oh, iPhone. You every <laughs> every iPhone I've had, <laughs> I've had five of them now. But the fucking U2 album on with the guy like getting a blowjob with it from the woman on the cover. <laughs> and I can't get that son of a bitch off, and it takes all my fucking data up and all. My, and why, it, it, how you, why have you still got that? I mean, you, you can delete it, you know. Can you? Do you know what? Sure you know what? Like, <laughs> there's this thing, there's like, this thing right? Cool. It's called Google, right? If you put yeah. in how to remove you two, someone, yeah. someone will have already done it. I just went all because you know what I mean. Ninety-nine point five percent, point five percent of the world's population yeah. have deleted that album off their. Phone. Man, I was trying to listen to fucking Biggie Smalls yesterday, and that shit came on instead. I'm like, what? Is that, happening. That's <laughs> fucked up, that, isn't it? That whole that thing, yeah. I mean, how that ever happened? I mean, got through. Could you imagine that know. though? If you could get like uh, Dino, mm. like you could go like to Apple mm. and say, "I want Dino Moore's last EP on every single phone <laughs> in the <laughs> world." I just see how many people notice. But I mean, mm. did did you two ask for that, or did Apple go to them and say, "Hey, do you fancy us doing must this?" Have been like, I think it must have been some sort of sponsorship deal either way. I would imagine somehow. I, th- I think if I recall, I think you two, uh, you two went to them, didn't they? You two went to Apple <laughs> and said, "We'll give you." X amount if you put it on every like you know like iPhone. That is because then weren't they advertising iPods and shit at the time? Like yeah, it was like a cross. You two were the whole yeah, like the oh, using them as the brand. I remember you uh, Bono was like a black outline on the white background. Oh, they right. got such such thing. like a backlash. Oh, it was Yo, real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like man, like <laughs> fuck man. But I mean, of all the bands, mm. that is the one you do not want. <laughs> No. Fucking, no man no. Oh, god no like, if it was the joshua tree yeah maybe or rattling <laughs> home damn straight but fucking whatever that one's called just any oh just i like uh, i like some early some of their early albums yeah but, joshua tree man but yeah like anything new like, nah, nah. Cool. yeah yeah it's, when they got tell rich. You who else has got a new podcast d snyder oh yeah it's, just yeah, the, yeah. it's called i want to talk <laughs> I really um, like need to start listening to more podcast. Like when I was on holiday, mm-hmm. I like listened to a lot of podcasts. Like I listen to to yeah. this one like yeah. quite regularly anyway, even when mm-hmm. I'm not on holiday. And um, there's a friend of mine who does a podcast, a wrestling podcast called Took of the Draw, which yeah. I I've been on and, and yeah. listen to his. These are they're really if you're into wrestling, like I'd imagine what's it, what's it called? I'd imagine uh, Took Took of the Draw. Took of the Draw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd imagine if shots. you're not into wrestling, you'd have probably switched off like two hours ago, but. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll put a thing at the beginning. If you want to go to the music, just skip an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but if you are into wrestling, mm. then definitely uh, check out that because if you're into like uh, British wrestling, that is really yeah, really man. cool. Yeah, Absolutely. and like I like like listen to. Um, I'm a bit sad. Like I listen to like uh, Disney podcasts and things like really? that. Really? Yeah, you I'm mean, a, like a real about the, the upcoming films or talking about the history of the films. It's or? more like uh, Disney theme parks and things. Like I'm more of a oh, no, real yeah. Disney theme park nerd. Oh, so people talking about them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And there's well, like, these days, there's podcasts about everything. Podcasts and everything. There's a friend yeah. of mine, um, mm-hmm. DCT, who's a wrestler, and I, I haven't listened to it. It's it's on my list of things mm-hmm. to listen to. But he does a, a an Arnold Schwarzenegger podcast. Mint. Where he's <laughs> oh, like, man, I gotta listen he's to going that. through like <laughs> he does a good Arnie impression. Go on. Not sending me to the cooler. <laughs> He's, oh, that's fucking amazing! <laughs> you did your, you did the uh, your first time you did your story about when he got into the, uh, the, for the not the White House, but when he got into his uh, when he was a governor. He did the office, the cigar, oh, story. the cigar story. 
Oh would... yeah, shit! Like he couldn't like <laughs> he couldn't like smoke cigars in the office, so he like just built this massive fucking gazebo outside and like put it in there. He's like, "What you gonna do about it now?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, "What a fucking hero, man!" Like, oh. God, like who else could do that in the world? Like just move outside. Like, oh, oh. What well, a guy, what a guy. I think he's I think he's struggling because like obviously mm. early Arnie, you've got like um, Terminator, you've got. Yeah. Uh, you know, Total Recall, Total Recall, Commando, Commando, mm. and it was the first one. One of the first ones he did. It was uh, Conan. Conan. Conan, Conan, Conan the Barbarian. Mm -hmm. So obviously, oh, it's like really Predator. good, really good shit. Yeah. Predator, you're getting all the hits, and then you get to like '90s Arnold. I love '90s Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. I like '90s Arnold Schwarzenegger more than hero. '80s. Last, Last Action, action Hero, hero. Yeah. Um, Jingle All the Way. You want to way. be a farmer? <laughs> it's a couple of acres. <laughs> You got like jingle all the way. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've kindergarten got kindergarten oh, cop. Kindergarten cop. Oh, kindergarten cop. Oh, Come on. Batman and Robin. Hey, we've just turned into an Arnie podcast now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, D, we're just going to do it for now. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, is oh. Is that basically what the podcast is? They just go through his films and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. So each episode is a different film. And That's they just good. like analyze it. And uh, mm -hmm. do you remember that Arnold Schwarzenegger metal band? What were they called again? Arno Cops, was it? Oh, yeah. That? There was, there was two, there's, wasn't there? There's there's there was Austrian was... Death Machine. Austrian Death Machine. Get to the chopper. Tim Lambesis. Get to the job from as I lay dying it was just his, his wasn't that, yes yeah, didn't that was, dude yeah. get like jailed for like trying to call a hit on his wife I or something yes exactly that but he put, he's, oh. he's, he's out now and as I lay dying are, are, are back on the scene with him yes oh my well, god well, he like, put what? like a, he put like a status on Facebook like yeah. apologising and explaining his side of the story It'd be like OJ oh, like, Simpson and a band man there's not a lot he's you just, can do about this no. like you know, you're kind of no. knackered you know yeah. just to be you've got to get out yeah <laughs> But That's, they were good. Like they had like um, one album, and they were really good. That Austrian mm. Death Machine. Oh, like weird... They had three. I think they had three albums. Did they? Like, like two albums. They're on my phone. <laughs> I've Isn't got like a phone. weird advert campaign at the moment that uses Arnie's head on like a little yeah on, like a, for a yeah. P PPI. Oh yes! Oh, oh, that that's oh, it scares me. How, yeah. uh, how the how <laughs> they managed to? I don't, I don't understand that. <laughs> Who was the guy that had to build and animate the little <laughs> Arnold the tank? Yeah. <laughs> don't forget about PPI. <laughs> <laughs> when do we like? Uh, when do we like? Crichton off Red Dwarf, his head. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, it, does, it looks so mm. strange, doesn't it? Like it's clearly made of wax. Mm -hmm. and, oh, it's but yeah. It's like, so, <sighs> yeah. but I should really listen to like more. So more you, stuff. you Apple iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm. do you use Apple Podcasts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you think it's a good app? Yeah, mm. it's awesome, man. Yeah, Some people don't like it because like, I use really. I use I'm on Android and I use a uh, Podcast Addict is the app I use. Okay, mm -hmm. but lo but a lot of people who like use other apps and then have gone to use Apple Podcasts have gone. This is not very good. Yeah, but well, if I've it's always, the only app yeah. you've ever used, then I've never had an issue. Yeah, I mean, I've always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, I think it's I mean, they've updated good. it a lot recently, but how do you listen to podcasts? <laughs> I go to the person's website, man. I'm All right, yeah, oh, old school. Like Joe Rogan. Well, that's why go people have got to have a good website. Yeah, because I used to have that a podcast and... many years ago. Did you? You might did listen you? to it back what in the day. The the wrestling mania. Yes, I did. Uh, is it still yes, on podcast? anywhere? What happened there? Like, why did you you left? Or um, I, I just got too busy with actual wrestling, like really? uh, rather than talking about See, it. Yeah. That's, See, you're missing the trick because you could use your podcast to promote your wrestling. I know, mm. I really. But um, I did, you know, they were like fucking really good. Like interview, um, I interviewed uh, Ken Shamrock. Uh, really, Chris Jericho. There you go. The people that you have at your shows, you yeah. could you could do a podcast with them. Well, yeah. Well, that's kind of what, what was Ken Shamrock like? Well, on the phone, he was. Lovely. Yeah. I didn't meet him in person because I had to phone mm. him. He was See, this him. is the other issue that some people have. It's, it's put me off some podcasts is their guests are on the phone and the quality is not that great. Yeah. yeah. And most people listen to podcasts like I do. When you're driving, if mm -hmm. you're running, walking the dog, or you're at the gym and you've got headphones on, and they're always, there's always a certain kind of noise. Totally. And if someone's on the phone and you have to kind of turn it up and it's it's not as clear, like yeah. you're not always mm -hmm. listening in complete, complete silence where you can like listen to it like most people are, they've got something going on in the background so yeah if, as soon as like some people oh this is a good guest and then i hear it oh it's on the phone i'm like oh, hey, to, fuck it there was a uh, one guest i had i had um, eric bischoff's son on once really? and he'd just been released from tna was it charlie garrett he was called in tna or something yes he was yeah mm -hmm. so he'd only just been released because we were like quite a pop because mm -hmm. there wasn't many podcasts who got like official guests like back then it was like six years ago mm -hmm. um so we were one of the more popular wrestling podcasts mm -hmm. and on iTunes and we got Charlie Garrett on and he was only just released from TNA like that week. Yeah. And I sent him an email and he said, Yeah, just give us a phone and we'll we'll do it. And we'll do it. And like I was recording it and I was I was so disheartened because even when I was 
listening to him. You could hear a bad I could, quality I, was. I could hardly mm. hear him, and it was. Yeah. I was so and because it was such a good interview, mm. but yeah. like I was like, it wasn't. It just wasn't mm. good. But um, that's part that of the guy, reason. That's part of the reason why. I only do. This is definitely the better set. This is like Joe Rogan setup, isn't it? Like, well, yeah, we've like kind of the taken the concept of yeah. that and pro- applied it to the music industry. But we did, we did a couple last year at, where, like, on Skype. Yeah, we had, we had Becky Baldwin and a few others, and mm. it just. Would you the, not do him again? No, no. Even there's a little bit of a delay, so the com- it's, the conversation just not as good. Yeah, it always yeah. ends up. It always ends up being just an interview when I ever do those because uh, yeah. there's no flow. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like. They just, they just didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I would agree. Yeah, um, yeah, I think most of the ones I did were on the phone. And in fact, I think all of them were just because mm-hmm. I didn't have the even the actually. Kids, yeah, the latest Chris Jericho one, he had Slash on. I was like, oh, amazing Slash, and it was on the phone. Oh, Not only that, it was a bad, it was a bad was line. Bad. I was like, I'd have to literally like be at home with my stereo. Listening to it really carefully to know what he's saying because yeah. it's really bad quality. In it, yeah. that's why he's put that out. If you can't even like hear. Yeah, it, like, well, I think. Uh, mm. I had AJ Styles on, and that you was had like... AJ Styles in like an interview. Yeah, yeah, wow, AJ Styles. Yeah, on the phone. Yeah. On the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, some people, some people manage it. Some people manage it. You can, you mm-hmm. can have it. Well, the desk we've got, you can have an input, get your phone in. If yeah. you get it right, it can, it can work. Well, it was on Skype, so yeah. it was his yeah. phone, my Skype, mm-hmm. his phone. In fact, now America. Skype's actually just updated, so it can record. Wow. Internally in the app, oh, so you okay. can record the video and the audio, or both. Or That's separate. really good because when I did it, mm-hmm. I had to download a separate program that hooked up to Skype to to record the call. Yeah, yeah. The other option yeah. that some people do is a double ender, where you get if the person's got technology minded, you get them to record their end, and then send you it. Right, and then yeah. you just mix it in, so they up. both sound like this. Yeah, uh, yeah. that, that I've, some people do that. That's that works. definitely but the way. Yeah, the person if they're on if they're on on the road, they're on tour, they're not going to have that. They're not going to yeah. have that set up. Well, well that's it. But, but like what a lot of people do is if they're if they're always doing podcasts on the move is have like a portable recorder like a Zoom yeah, well, H6 um, that's got it's got actual XLR inputs for proper microphones yeah. and really good quality yeah well um, Steve Loucher just took in the draw he has that like he just yeah, he just goes around the shows and, and that's what Jericho people, has yeah it's great yeah. but um but yeah I mean AJ was like awesome when I spoke to was him this it was he... just after it had been released mm-hmm. from TNA right see so there was a pattern here was this? <laughs> it was when he originally got released from TNA and he left as the champion man. so that was two and then he went and def- or something was it something like that yeah and because yeah. the, there's a the whole gimmick that he was taking mm-hmm. the TNA heavyweight title all over the world and defending yeah. it everywhere but TNA it was like uh mm-hmm. it's like a year he went back for like a few months and then he went onto the indies for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Then he went to WWE. It was all over pay, wasn't it? They slashed his contract by 60%. So, yeah, it was around that kind like, of time. I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, But I he mean, was awesome. How like, unreasonable is that? Like, <laughs> next year, yeah, you're going to work for like 60% less. Well, that was it because he can go, and he did, mm-hmm. go on the indies and made probably more money than he ever has in his entire life through mm-hmm. merch sales and, mm-hmm. well, his fee because he was like the hottest person in the world. There so he go. can yeah. charge like mm-hmm. ridiculous money. Like, even exactly, when he wasn't, man. to be fair, even when he wasn't, like, a huge, huge star, like, when he wasn't in the Bullet Club, yeah. when he was still, like, kind of TNA, but yeah. but not the big guy, mm-hmm. he was still a lot of money then. Did you not try and book him one time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost. Just didn't, didn't. What was his fee? Oh, couldn't possibly, couldn't no, possibly say couldn't, out publicly, no. No. Not, no. no, I wouldn't feel comfortable, but it no. was a lot. <laughs> it's really? multiple zeros. <laughs> it was pretty good. Multiple zeros. <laughs> yeah, Shit. yeah. Well, it depends see, on what you'd say. But, you know, if you if you're doing the bands as well, you, you've got to pull these fees out for the bigger bands that you got. If you go That's working it. your way up with that as well, yeah. it's a lot. It's a high, it's a high pressure sort of thing to keep everything ticking over just to cover costs. That's it. More yeah. so, more so for the music side of it, I think. Yeah. Well, you seem you, obviously you know you're much more comfortable doing the wrestling. I think it's what you do. You know it. Yeah, I think um, in terms of the cost it's it's more what are your main costs as a wrestler as a so the show we have um well your main costs are the, the wrestlers and their travel expenses yeah we don't pay for a ring because we have our own ring high the venue uh kind of yeah it's You've on a, a bit deal. of a, a, a deal. deal where mm-hmm. obviously the bar sales are good enough for us to have the venue for for next and out really oh, so yeah. it's really yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then we've got um like your insurance and things like ah, that. Yeah, yeah. And advertising. Apart from that, that's mm-hmm. pretty much everything, really. Um, we did have... Um, we hired a screen yeah. um, this last couple of years, so it's like a kind of Titan Tron thing on the stage. Mm. wasn't too bad because I knew the guy who had it, and right. he kind of did us a, a mate's rates kind of deal, yeah. so it wasn't too bad. Whereas he's now left wrestling, unfortunately. Really? Like, this guy called Brian. He uh, he's just, 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 just stopped. He's, he's been in wrestling for like, 
eight years and just yeah, wanted, to, wanted to change time for a change. Fair enough. So that was fine. But he was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Did it make a difference? The screen? Yeah. yeah. I think it does. Yeah, I think mm. it adds a lot more professionalism you to the play, show. You play promos and, and stuff. And and totally. Yeah. The thing is, if you're a child, um, or if you're a parent bringing a child to the wrestling, like they, chances are they only watch WWE. They haven't got a clue about Ring of Honor or TNA, yeah. maybe TNA, but, or mm. any independent in the world. The they, they only watch WWE, and obviously WWE's product looks incredible. <laughs> it's slick, yeah, yeah. it's got a big screen. So originally when we started doing the venue, it was the stage was just, well, there was nothing on the stage in the venue because yeah. the ring was on the dance floor. And mm-hmm. that was there. Whereas the the, the screens, big screens, probably like the size of like that curtain. Maybe not quite as, yeah, it's probably about the size of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it fills the majority of the stage and entrance videos yeah. and promos. It just mm. adds more to it. I thought, yeah. So we didn't mm. have that on Saturday because Brian's now left wrestling, which is a real shame. So and it was a huge miss. Mm. He just took it with him, I think. Yeah, yeah. he still uses it for private yeah. functions, but we have bought our own now. So, oh. so that's going to be, the be next quite show. expensive. Like you don't have to expensive, name a price, but, but like, once you've got it, yeah, that's a cost it, that you don't have to pay yeah. for. It wasn't as expensive as I thought it was. I've just been looking in the wrong places, clearly, because <laughs> yeah. like uh, like the guy who who found the screen for us mm-hmm. sent me the thing. Sent me, oh, here it is, and the projectors and stuff. And I don't know whether it was like a trade, like whether he just because he's in like the the. He's doing like a karaoke yeah. kind of trade. So mm-hmm. maybe he's got like a trade account with someone. Mm-hmm. But he was like, oh, I can get you this. And I think for a, it was like for a 20 foot screen. So wow. that's like. That's pretty big. Big. Feels like the stage. Yeah. Oh, maybe it wasn't. It might have been 16 foot. But still, it was pretty big screen, 20, 16 mm-hmm. foot. It was only like 40 pound. Like, that's good enough. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Well, but yeah. it says like was 350 out 40 pound. And I'm like, huh. This is strange. And it's here. And it's Even it's 50 sounds. I thought you were going to say like yeah. about a few thousand. Um, it's, not like a, it's not like an LED screen. No. It's one that obviously you project things yeah, onto. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah, project, yeah. just project a screen really. Um, but it do does look, job, though, it looks, it? It looks really like, yeah. cool when you've mm. got it all lined up and everything. It looks, it just looks the part. Because you know? that gives you the opportunity then to create things to put on the screen. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And also it's good for like, intro videos and if we've got like someone coming the next month they can send us a promo and it plays on and that adds so much more to it as well yeah because like previously i'd like stand in the ring and go coming next month is the hurricane Uh, or no one's listening and everyone yeah everyone's like (laughs) at the bar or something we all know people like screens like, oh. Exactly, and he goes, "Here's what's going next. <laughs> Lights go out, bang on the screen. Yeah, yeah. And effect, sometimes the rest look and just talk about even, a cage. Even oh, sorry, mm-hmm. no, just, no. I was just wondering, just target have like a cage, no, like, for a cage wish, match. Yeah, I wish we could. Like, do you the, have like the, a cage or whatever? we've we've thought about mm-hmm. doing that, but because yeah. the the ceiling it doesn't look mm-hmm. low when you're in there, yeah. but it is low in the venue, like. We can mm-hmm. do like the wrestlers can do like crazy shit off the top rope, and it's comfortable, yeah. uh-huh. but like it's too too low for a cage. Yeah. Well, so you couldn't do it. Oh, you couldn't like, even for Hell in a Cell. Yeah, it'd be too too ah, low. Right, the yeah. only way we could do mm-hmm. it, and um, we've kind of said it, is if we did the Sand Center, we could do a cage match. Yeah. But the Sand Center have made it abundantly clear that they, they do they not want, want wrestling. wrestling. <laughs> they do not Why? want it. Wow. I don't know. I What's do that not about? know. Like, what? They don't like fun. I'll tell you something, right? <laughs> I think you could be right there. Also, I hear. Yeah. 1999, right? The Sunset had a WWF tribute show. Oh, yeah. There was full of shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. What the fuck is a WWF tribute show? Back in like the late 90s, early noughties, British Mm. wrestling was kind of on a massive downward. Like, it's not like today, it's booming today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, the days of like ITV, like World of Sport Wrestling, and Big Daddy had gone. So, yeah. oh, right, you yeah. know, the, the heydays. So promoters would book tribute shows. So it was people dressed as Stone Cold, people dressed yeah. as The Rock, people dressed up as Kane and The Undertaker. Wow. And it was, it was absolutely mind. fucking garbage. Yeah, sure. It was I've absolute heard of embarrassment. I saw, yeah. Um, uh, I, fake if, Undertaker. If you, if you like Google, <laughs> like... WRF UK tribute shows. You'll yeah. get all of the old shitty posters. Wow. They were popular though. They were they? very they were popular. Really, like, I mean, the one like say the one at the the Sands. There was probably mm-hmm. about seven, eight hundred, nine hundred people there. Yeah, incredible. It was a massive show, man. But for some reason, mm. they just don't want. I mean, they have comedians on. on all the time. Yeah, like yeah, say, yeah. That's all I've ever seen it. And occasionally they do some bands. And they do like productions, like plays and stuff. Don't yeah, they? And yeah, musicals and Everything stuff. Everything but, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's a real shame because it's something that people have 
like it's not like we don't draw the crowds like yeah we draw like two three whatever hundred each month mm-hmm. yeah but the thing and is if you were going to do it at the last sunset you'd pull out all the stops you'd yeah get, you'd make sure you had a big name exactly and um and also like we do it like we get essentially like no help with the advertising it's all apart from the paper which is great it's all our own advertising mm-hmm. If we had like the sand centers advertising and marketing, and exactly. we were in all the size of that fucking billboard on the outside of it, yeah. Jesus yeah, Christ! Um, or mm. even in there, like the booklet, you know, that they send out to everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or their emails. It was just. It re- I know it would sell. Would the brickyard yeah. work? Could you do the brickyard? It's brick too, too, too small. Too small. Yeah. Too small. Really? The floor yeah, area yeah. is too small. If Far that maybe if that stage wasn't there, and you could go right to the back. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Mm. But I mean, it's mm. something that we've wanted to do at the sand center, but they just don't want it, and unfortunately, like. I don't know whether the price yeah. that we've been told to hire it is the standard price, but, but I would imagine it would if be it is the standard thousands. price, then it, it's fucking disgusting because Astronomical. we are like a local company, and you'd oh, think they'd want to support that. And totally, work, work, work yeah. together just, and stuff. Just, and... Isn't it council run the sand center? Are they, um, are they council owned or? If, I think it is council funded, maybe, but yeah. But if that's the case, it's just all guidelines. This is what we're allowed yeah. to do. Sort of like, yeah. they don't even consider. Not, nothing gets considered. But I mean, it, like boxing's happened. Really, they did boxing. Boxing. Oh, right. yeah, boxing. I remember there was a charity boxing show on in there because I know wow. someone who boxed. But wrestling just and the thing is that would be we would pull a cra- we would mm-hmm. get, pull out all the stops. Absolutely. I think I remember. Um, Price enough. I said when we yeah. we could have had AJ Styles. If we did AJ Styles, it has to be mm-hmm. at the Sand Center. Yeah, but pff, just isn't gonna. Exactly. And then we could do a cage match at the Sand Center, and we Wasn't could advertise it, at this cage. I match remember and... getting told the story about the Sand Center, right? That no shit, like it was the Who wanted to play there, right? The Who, and the Sand Center turned around and like, oh no, you can't do it that date because there's a karate tournament. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's the fucking Who. <laughs> Like what, what? What are you thinking? You know what I mean? Oh it's, my like, god! Like fuck the karate oh. tournament. Have them in the car park doing it. Like you yeah. know, like it's the who. Jesus you know? Christ! I used to See, do karate at the Sound Sand Sand Center back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I think I did as well. I did in the cafe <laughs> upstairs. That's thinking karate like, gradings. Putting the area on the map. I yeah. Know. I always think of things like that. Think of the itinerary of all the places that's going to be playing. The pe- people of Sunset should want Carlisle on there. Yeah, exactly. It's it's well they've got they've got Peter Andre next year. So, <sighs> oh man, but I what think a non-event. I do, that is. I do. I do. It's a shame because I feel like there's so many people putting in so much hard work in Carlisle. Like, unfortunately, with, that'll probably be really well attended. And all. Yeah. Oh, no doubt yeah. it'll sell out. Yeah. Be all those people who'll go for that one song, and then <laughs> uh, they'll leave. Yeah. They're like gone, man. Yeah. Well, they'll probably wait until last to play it. Yeah. Always, always yeah. save it to the end. Yeah, yeah make sure that That's no one true. leaves. If he comes onto it, he'll be playing to an empty crowd in half an hour. Like, oh, here's man. a new song. Right, I'm going to the. See top. you later, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, uh, but yeah, I feel like, and I've I felt like this for a very long time. Uh, kind of alluded to it earlier is there's a lot of people who put a lot of hard work into putting events on in Carlisle independently mm-hmm. with Absolutely. no backing. Absolutely. And a lot of venues who help people put like you know the venue, the fire station, the brickyard, like mm-hmm. those venues are awesome at helping promoters put gigs on and yeah. are very flexible in their in their rates i suppose and and mm-hmm. promotional wise they're very helpful trying to help the cars route and then you've got the biggest venue in town with the most potential who just it's not interested feel, i feel like don't give a shit no, you know, no, like no. They're, yeah. just, no. they're very basic with their booking they're very boring with their booking they're very safe yeah and it was when like they got the League of Gentlemen, mm-hmm. and I was like surprised that that was a that, yeah. that they got them because that's quite mm. an out there booking. Yeah, but it was awesome, and it's like well, you, they've got everything there that they could possibly yeah. want, and they just don't. You could literally do have it. any kind of event right. on there, anything. You mm-hmm. just need to revamp that place, though. I think it's getting one. Yeah, yeah. I've not been there for years, years. but it's all very I mean, well and good. Given it a footage revamp. of, um, I may have mentioned this on here before actually, but Matt Hoffman. In like 1988, doing a BMX tournament in the Sand Centre. Bloody hell! And like you look, it's exactly the same as it is now. The wooden <laughs> yeah. fucking floors. Oh and yeah, shit. I mean yeah. it's. Uh, you know, like... I went to see uh, Greg Davis mm-hmm. there, the comedian, and oh, yeah. he walked on, and he was like, "Thanks for coming out to see me again. Uh, thanks for coming out to see me in Carlisle. I yeah. really appreciate your support." But what a fucking shit venue this is. <laughs> yeah. And everyone was like, Way! 
see. He's like, no disrespect to the staff, but this is fucking shit. The, the, <laughs> like, the crowd yeah. are basically going, yeah, we know. Yeah, everybody got a round of applause, and I was like, oh my god, how embarrassing, you know? But it is like, see, and if that, that could anyone, that could have been end up in a review somewhere. Does anyone yeah. remember when um, Steven Seagal played the sound center with no. his band? No, I didn't even know he had a band. I didn't even know he had a band. Like a blues band, man. No idea. And like we went, it was like, so when's he gonna start doing kicks and shit? It's like it's <laughs> fucking music. <laughs> it's not fucking his film. <laughs> you know what I mean? Foo fight. It's like it's like he's playing tunes, but he's not gonna beat the shit out of someone in the audience. <laughs> Any minute you know, now. So he's like, pulling pull chef knives out. They're called oh. like squeeze box or something. Oh, that's some really rogy. Oh my god, like, <laughs> that reminds me so much. Like, and this is Carlisle all over, isn't it? In a funny yeah. way, but it's like. Uh, at the brickyard, I, I don't know if you, you might have been there actually. It was years and years ago. Neil yeah. Buchanan's band from you know Neil Buchanan from Marseille. Oh, yeah. No, it was no, so he, Marseille. Were they called Marseille? Yeah, Marseille. you were there. Wow, yeah, I think we went yeah, together. Marseille. I'm sure. I'm sure we all went don't together. Those big group of us. Yeah. If I'd have known I, about it. I, I, been I knew he had a band. I knew he had a metal band, but I just yeah. never looked into yeah, it. Yeah, the, the oh, it was a metal band. Metal yeah, band. Yeah, this is one of those things that shocks you, like like Christopher Lee when he was into metal. And stuff like that. <laughs> very uh, <laughs> kind of Dio style metal wow. band, you know. This is an art attack. This is an art attack. Yeah. This is art attack. <laughs> so there was people there who obviously only went because he was in art attack. Because who like, he is? Yeah. He got. Uh, he came on and they played a few songs, mm -hmm. and he's not even the singer; he's the guitarist. And I felt. So, and he was like, I was like, who oh, say art attack? Say, <laughs> say, art, <laughs> say art attack. Like oh, heckling the people. Like, who oh, where's head? Where's head? He's like, let the fucking guy play a gig. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, like. God. He's depressed. Like, I'm trying to forget <laughs> about all that. <laughs> Have you not brought head with you? No, he's a fucking metal man. And then he said, right, tell yeah. you what, like five songs. And he was like, tell you what, we'll just get this out the way. And then we can just carry on with the night. He goes, this is an art attack. This is an art oh, attack. This is an art attack. <laughs> and everybody like, loved it. And, uh, and then everyone, I think everyone was like, I was expecting to have like someone that. on the screen in the background. Yeah. Going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> Can you tell what it is? <laughs> but yeah, that was like that was That's a weird, yeah. weird thing. Before, <laughs> before cool. I forget to mention, um, before I forget, like Bozen, oh, your yeah. current band. Yeah, what's happening? It's Th all, things it, are happening. It's um. Would, Last time you were on, it was all bubbling, and you were just getting it started. So everything's wrote. We're ready for a show. We're just taking our time. We're just waiting for the right show and stuff. You got a show booked, haven't you? Um, it it, it fell through. That okay. show fell through, right, okay. but it was it was just like uh, was that here somewhere? That was it was uh, Club Rock. Yeah, okay, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Club it was Rock. the one that the like, England one that mm -hmm. had to, to pull, yeah. like just couldn't oh, reschedule. Right, 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 yeah. We're looking to reschedule that, not with them. Not yeah, with England, I think but, was like, it December, si well, December sixteenth, maybe or sometime 14th. in December. So yeah, so maybe um, then. around about that time. But we're just we're just going with the flow. We're not in any sort of rush or anything. But we're we're gig ready. We're ready to go now. You, you do half an hour. We've got about an hour worth of material. Wow, that's good. But that's only like five songs, man. <laughs> wow. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's like Jesus. Progressive as shit unintentionally. So describe like, this band then. How if you if there's someone who had never heard them before, what, what, what? I don't know how to describe it. Like, wow. Just now that's intriguing. A bit of everything. Is it a bit of everything that you could be compared to? Oh, man. Opeth, maybe. Maybe that that kind of thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's progressive then. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Definitely. I the, saw some the of the footage that you put of your, you were in your rehearsal. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed. I was really yeah, cool. man. It's fucking. I'm loving doing it, but it's it's just been a massive learning curve. You know what I mean? Like changing my vocal style. I'm, yeah, doing, yeah. I'm doing my usual kind of stuff, but then going into more of the shouting, screaming, guttural kind of stuff. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I've literally just had to go back to the whiteboard and start over, start afresh. So cool. it's been good. <laughs> so you've got, you've put a song out. Have you got a demo out? Or? Yeah, we've got one demo out. Cool. For As We Divide, I think. As like We 12, Divide? I think that's 12 minutes long. Wow. That one. We'll, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. But like, if you'd asked me like two years ago, would I be doing this? Like in a progressive metal band? Like, no way. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, I was the least expected person to be doing something like, this but i'm having a lot of fun with it is it five piece like, it's a five piece yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you cool. know what i mean two guitars bass drums and myself up front but so you're planning on doing some recording of any kind or yeah we're just gonna do an album yeah you know because cool. we've we're really fortunate in a sense because uh you know the atlas works yeah in carlisle we've got like basically with the loft yeah basically the one side of the loft yeah so we've got like our room 
which we share with a, a punk band called The Meltdowns. Right. And then in the room next to it, there's like actually like Matty Cartner. It's like all his fucking idea from his, from his brain. He's putting like a studio in there. That's a good idea. And like a desk and shit. He's putting yeah. windows in and whatever. So it, I, I just love it because there's a real kind of punk ethos to it you know the other diy sort of stuff yeah, yeah, I, f- yeah. I feel like it's kind of like black flag kind of thing I'm, I'm really into that you know what i mean yeah whereas with hellion <laughs> rise and it was quite crisp and polished with everything with the recordings but this is watts and all how i like it you know what i mean mm. i love cool. it man you know what i mean so you've got pretty much no safety net with the recordings around which i'm i'm loving do you know what i mean like yeah we're not using any sort of pro tools or our uh pitch correction or anything it's basically if i can't do it i can't do it you know yeah, I mean? yeah. i'm going out there and it's going to be as very old as school gets. approach yeah of course it's not com- I, I, it's not commercial you know i wouldn't no, say it's just commercial stuff but we're doing it for the love of doing it doing it for you yourselves know? yeah we're just like fuck it if people like it they like it. if they don't then okay sure at least you at least you're doing it for, if you're doing it for yourself and you can't go wrong exactly you're happy doing it yeah exactly but i think next year is going to be when we step it up a gear and we're going to be just out there doing shows because that i've missed doing shows like a hole in the head yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so obviously you need to tie in like a new release with like booking some dates to promote that new release yeah. and stuff i mean get, hopefully the album there. hopefully the album yeah. be done by then but we're already writing the next stuff because obviously like musically everything was wrote when i came Before in for the even, first album so you just to put your vocals on it yeah but it was like 60 minutes worth of reter- material on five tracks i'm like so shit i'd the, never i'd never even wrote you know i'd only wrote like four five minute tracks and it's like so crap, was there like, no vocals or lyrics or any ideas at all nothing so you had to do it all nothing maybe wow. maybe a few song titles and stuff but this was all um i just had to go in there and you were left to do that all by yourself no none of the other bands yeah. had any input on the lyrics or anything every, the new stuff, it's nice because, you know, the contributing. I've never well, had So that. the second lot of stuff that you're starting to write. Yeah, like I've just openly, with open arms, said if you've, if you've got some stuff, then sure, I'd like to look at it. Cause Cause is, that even more diff- is that even more different from the uh, stuff that it was there when you arrived? What, in its sound? Yeah. Oh, it's even more progressive. It's even even more out there. Wow. Apart from one of the songs, which is a Pantera-esque kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Cool. But I find... um. I'm really pushing boundaries for myself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, doing it. It's like, it's going to be interesting to see what people think. Because they might they not like it. it. I might not be able to do it, you know what I mean? It might just be an illusion to myself that I can do it. I feel I can kind of do it. Mm. But it's nice well, to have what, something that's fresh. That's the, the you know? recordings will help, because if, if you're not sugarcoating anything, mm-hmm. it's just raw. Then Yeah. That, you know what the hardest thing i found? So Remembering... Remembering 12 minutes of what music's doing. God, yeah. Where, where to fucking come in. You need a musical it's, GPS. It's not even, it's like different time signatures and go from 4, 4, 7, 8 and stuff. Mm. Uh, it's like, man, like, I, I just... Yeah, can you we know, not was, go instrumental? <laughs> yeah, I was used to just doing 4, 4s four and stuff like that. Yeah. And my timing's fucking... I don't have great timing as it is, you know what <laughs> I mean, man? So, but we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm just deciding whether or not to have kind of a gimmick on stage. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't know whether to just go out there as me or to have some <laughs> kind of like get up. Do you know what I mean? I would love to have that, but if I'm going to do it, going into cafe, I'd want to stick to it 100%. I wouldn't want to like break that character of that. So we'll ah. see. We'll see what happens. You I know appreciate I mean? your honesty. Yeah, man. It's refreshing. Honest about everything. But yeah, you know, but I'd rather be true about shit than bullshit. Like, so. You have to like almost like wrestling yeah. a correct character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've al- I've always thought that, and a lot of people have said that to me as well. There's a lot of similarities between rock music and wrestling. Oh yeah, definitely. You're on the road. Definitely. It's you're a show. Be on you the put road. on a show. You're yeah. doing a show. It's maybe. I mean, being in a band's physical, you're not going to get dropped on your head like wrestling, but... Well, some sort of, you never know. <laughs> well, you never know, man. You never know. I've been hit over the head with guitars and shit. And yeah. I've been concussed. I've been hit in the Concussed face far too many times. Mm. But, um, yeah, they're both... Like, yeah, to me, wrestling's rock and roll, man. You know what I mean? They're doing yeah. the same shit. They're just not singing. They're just taking fucking bats, taking bats and... <laughs> Getting thrown around and landing barbed wire and shit, so... But people want to see a fucking show. Like, if they yeah, paid, it's man, like wrestling. Yeah. They pay their money. They want to be entertained. Mm-hmm. They want to be... I would say with musicians, it's like they want to see... They don't want to see someone who they could imagine meeting in the street. They want to see someone yeah. like from another planet. 
Like, sure, like, right? Like, can't even believe that this, this sure. person exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just don't like static shows. No. I've never been no. a fan of... You could go and see like the most technically proficient band in the world, say Dream Theater, who I thoroughly enjoyed watching Dream Theater live, but there was no sense of danger to it. You know what I mean? No mm. sense that. Whereas I went to see... It was MOD. It was Method of Destruction in... Um, Sound was it Sound Central in Manchester? Is that Sounds, what it's called? Or Grand Central? No, it's called like Sound City. Oh, Sound, Sound, Sound Control. Sound Control. Yeah, that's yeah. it. There, and it was fucking chaos, man. But it just added that sense of just realism to it. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, am I gonna get out of this in one piece? I'm gonna have a broken. <laughs> Someone's neck gonna get hurt. Someone's gonna <laughs> lose their eye. You know? Yeah. I'm just into that though. Not everybody yeah. is, you know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But, <laughs> You know, it's been a strange year to say the least. You know what I mean? Because mm. for the five years before that, you know, four or five shows a month, and then it's been like I'd, I'd, I've been lost with time. You don't know what to do yourself. You know. So is Hellion Rising done? Um, I don't. I wouldn't say it's done, but I don't think it's going to be doing anything anytime soon. Next couple of years, you know. Yeah. Did you go? Did you go on CG or play the other night? I didn't know. I heard yeah. it, I I couldn't go either. But I heard it was. I heard. I know. Really I heard. Well. I heard it was a. Re- yeah. I I was look. I was going, and I had a bit of an episode, and I got like I got fucking wrecked in the house. So <laughs> I, I I didn't get to it for obvious reasons. I wanted to go though, but um, I think they'll do really well. You know, from the footage I saw. Yeah, and definitely going to have an appeal to people it. Online, docs. People online were raving about yeah. them. I always said with docs. I never told them in the band, but I always felt if someone was to replace me in that band, if I ever felt like I was going to leave or something, or, you know, say if I got wasted or whatever, I thought he would be the person to, to take over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Out of everybody, you know, everybody yeah, I saw, he was, he was the one I thought. Because he can add his own thing to shit, you know, with Darks. Mm. It's kind of like with Joey Belladonna and John Bush with Anthrax, you know? Yeah. Like, John's so different to joey but he added his own thing to it which made it great you know he didn't come in and try and imitate someone he made the songs his own and mm. I, th- I think docs could have done that so it was nice to see uh geo and them a lot like form a band with him because he's such a talented musician he is he's you know? very charismatic i thought definitely yeah he's a really did you, nice did you guy go? i had the wrestling on saturday oh, so yeah, i didn't go yeah. but yeah. i seen the the videos and i was actually really gutted because mm-hmm. like i saw the videos they were putting out like prior to it like yeah, there's a really ago. good like PR campaign, lately, yeah, 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 it was Spot like on. ridiculous, and like even like um, you couldn't hear Dox's voice like in the promos, but you could hear the music, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my god, this is like really good, and I know how good of a singer Dox is, and a great singer, frontman, good vocalist. So if you just knew added to that music, it was going to mm-hmm. be awesome, mm-hmm. and I saw some of the videos from Saturday, like, mm-hmm. and it was. It was on a, like someone filmed it from like the front, so it was like no the way, sound no. wasn't like great on the phone, mm. but you could tell what it would have sounded like if you yeah, were there, yeah, yeah. and it sounded mm-hmm. like really good. Like for a, they've only been a, I don't know how long they've been around, like how how long we practicing rather like six months maybe. Coming yeah. to a year, I think they've been since yeah. like getting song ideas and about together yeah. or something. They're gonna have like a real. Mm. I think they're gonna have a really good run because mm. they've just got. I think they're gonna be. Definitely. They're gonna get definitely. really, really popular. It's the image of that band as well. They've got a good image and stuff. It's mm-hmm. very um, marketable and stuff. You know, when you look at it, yeah. and that that's gonna work for them for them kind of big shows. So that was I, I'll have to go crowd. and see them. I'm not gonna get. Yeah, yeah. Next no, time. me I'll definitely, definitely. Show up. <laughs> it was good. I couldn't go to that. Yeah, it was a really big crowd on Saturday yeah, as well. Was really well attended. Really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I was so happy because I was like really gutted that I could that I couldn't yeah. go because. Um, I said I really wanted to see mm-hmm. see their debut show. Yeah. And I like Tomorrow is Lost as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, Big Foot. Big Foot are, awesome. are, awesome. are brilliant. Yeah. I haven't um, seen them with the new singer. No, I haven't. No, no. 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 I heard he's good though. Yeah. yeah. And I hadn't heard of Di- Digital Criminals, but Raz seems to rave about them, so I'm gonna have to really mm-hmm. check them out. Yeah, a lot of people and, said they were good. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean Sounds yeah. like I thought it was like a DJ dance thing. It digital does, criminal it? sounds like some sort of dance. It, it sounds like digital underground or something. Yeah. I think group, it, so. I mean it might not I might be completely off the mark, but it, I think it's electric rock kind of mm. rap thing it might not be it might be a completely off the mark but yeah. i feel like mm. that's what it would be but i was gutted that it wasn't there but it's like I know, man. next time 
because it won't they be. Won't I don't be think it'll be surely. long till um, till they put. I mean, I think they'll put a headline mm-hmm. show on at the Brickyard. So uh, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised. Like for their album mm-hmm. launch or something, maybe. Or, yeah. So it, why it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. Gonna, they're going to draw people to it. So like, totally. why, why not? So yeah, mm-hmm. I'll be there for that. So I look forward to that. Yeah, man. It'll be good. good. Well, boys, I uh-huh. think we'll wrap this bitch up. Awesome. Awesome, man. Nearly three hours. No really? way. <laughs> no shit. That's flown two, over. Well, two again. hours forty. Bloody hell. What, 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 what was it? What's been your longest show? <coughs> Probably this one. Who yeah. knows? Oh. Long, long, long. Yeah. So I'm sorry if um, the wrestling crack has bored people, but I'm sure by this point they'll have switched off. Ah, it's all so good. I'm sure yeah. it, it's all good. It, it's not like the good the um, the market audience was, but you never know. There's a lot of people who like wrestling. Exactly. Maybe don't don't know about bringing a new audience to the show. I think there is a bit. There's a, there is a good about. crossover yeah. though. I think it's funny mm-hmm. though because um, I think we've discussed it many times mm-hmm. as well, like yeah. about putting rock bands on at the wrestling. Yeah, that for some reason just oh, does yeah. not work. Yeah, that no. was a thing at you one think point. It would, but yeah, I've been I've been to a wrestling show with bands mm-hmm. on, and it was just so awkward. Like I, I think it, one, again, I think I at an over eighteen one. show it could possibly work, but yeah, when there's you'd families have the right, there, you have to pick the right bands. Yeah, when there's we, families um, there, it just wouldn't. We wouldn't did one in Doncaster work. like years ago, and it was like we were going on after the main event, which was this fucking crazy hardcore match, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we went on like after that and it was like everyone had fucking gone and everyone, <laughs> you know what I mean? so the guy's sweeping up yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty, pretty <laughs> much these guys are good yeah <laughs> the, well, guy from a, the, Nirvana the other video, thing that's happening now sweeping. is comedians opening for bands oh really yeah that's happening that's yeah. happening um dean del rey do you know who he is mm-hmm. he's got a huge he's got a huge really? podcast he, he used to be in cool, music man. and now he's now he's a comedian he's d- open for yeah. bill burr's done it Right. Henry Rollins yeah, did, did for Alice um, yeah, in yeah. Chains and f- f- someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Did was. Henry Rollins do it for Dinosaur Jr. Yeah. or something? He did yeah. it for Tool or something? Or Maynard Keenan? Yeah, that's that's like yeah. a thing. Like, And it seems to be working. Bloody Obviously, hell. they've got like big named comedians. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. But like, you always think of like, people like, ready for a band, but like then they're like, quiet and they listen to this one person talking. Like, uh-huh. Would yeah. they like, yeah. be quiet so you can actually hear this guy that's talk? So weird. It's <laughs> awesome, man. But so, anyway, there you go. But well, thanks for coming down, guys. No, no, really enjoyed it. Much. Really yeah. enjoyed it. Again. Love we'll coming definitely, on. So. We'll do this again sometime. Yeah. Good shit. It's a good laugh. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, thanks guys. Again. Thank you very much. Man. Thank See you very much. Later.